Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto and Shizune fallen in love, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. While the older man radiated patience and content to simply take in everything around him as he was walking, the young boy walking alongside him, had not yet learned the virtue, and made it painfully known to his companion. If his fidgeting around and pulling out portions of his own hair was any indication. Are we there yet, Hiro Senen asked a short 12-year-old blonde wearing an orange jumpsuit of all things. Don't call me that you little brat replied the self-declared super pervert. We'll be there soon enough. Like I told you two minutes ago. This did not placate the young blonde. But Hiro Senen, I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm thirsty. I want to learn something awesome. I want to go on a date with Sakura-chan. I want to. Enough yelled Jiraiya, throwing his hands in the air. I give up. You want something to do, Naruto. Naruto thought his prayers had been answered. Seeing how they weren't close to the next town yet, and Sakura-chan wasn't with them, that meant one thing. Oh boy. Are you going to teach me another awesome thing? Jiraiya frowned at this. Naruto, I'm already teaching you. That's pretty darn awesome, even for me. In fact, why aren't you practicing that right now? Naruto stuck his tongue out at Jiraiya and proceeded to blow raspberries. Upon stopping, he replied, but we're walking, Hiro Senen. I can't concentrate hard enough to focus on the men walk at the same time. Jiraiya fascipumed. Literally. If the brat couldn't even do that much, what was he supposed to do? Believing himself to be out of options, Jiraiya checked every pocket he had. Stupid pockets were full of kunai and shuriken, along with a couple scrolls, but nothing that would shut up the eternal headache that was his traveling companion. Until he got to the back pocket of his pants, where the culmination of years of research was in written form. Jiraiya inwardly was chuckling to himself. Oh man, I should let him read this, it'll shut him up good. Okay brat. No, I'm not going to teach you anything new. Naruto's entire posture dropped down at this. But do not be dismayed. For I have in my possession a marvelous and timeless piece of literature. Behold Jiraiya took out the first book of the famed Icha Icha series. Naruto was not impressed. What the heck is that Iro Senen? Jiraiya just grinned. Read the first two chapters of this, brat. In fact, read them without once asking me if we're almost there yet. You do that, and I'll teach you a new one, though it'll be after you learn of course. Got it Jiraiya was praying this would work. Naruto was jumping and laughing in a field of flowers in his head. Just read two chapters from a book. Cakewalk. Iro Senen better teach me something awesome. Okay Iro Senen. You got it. But make sure that what you teach me is really cool Naruto said. Okay kid, okay. But you gotta live up to the deal first. Here you go, and enjoy. Haha, <laughs> Jiraiya said as he gave the book to Naruto. Naruto sighed. Books were so infinitely boring. But he would survive through this ordeal to learn from the Iro Senen. Flipping the book open, he began to read the first page. Jiraiya for all intents and purposes was enjoying the serenity that was nature without Naruto's nagging voice. He closed his eyes, and the only sound that he could hear was the clacking his sandals made after every step. Jiraiya lost himself in a daydream of Tsunade. Of course, she eventually found him and beat him to within an inch of his life, but that wasn't the point. He chuckled to himself remembering how she dragged Anoichi Yamanaka, and demanded that he erase that image from his mind or face her wrath. Anoichi in a perfectly rational desire to stay alive, complied with her demands, and escorted Jiraiya to the Anbu interrogation room. There, Jiraiya's quick thinking saved his oh-so-precious memory via bargaining. Jiraiya made a deal with Anoichi, Jiraiya would keep his memory, but Anoichi would also get to see what he saw. One mind reading later, and the deal was sealed. Thank Kami that all men cannot resist the forbidden beauty that Tsunade has. Wait a second, it's still quiet. What? Jiraiya pulled himself out of the daydream as he realized it was still quiet. He looked down at Naruto, who was engrossed in the book. Jiraiya saw that Naruto was nearing the end of chapter 3, which was well above what the deal was. I had the kid's a natural pervert. I'm so proud. Oi Naruto. Naruto. Earth to Naruto. Naruto, I'm going to teach you an S-class dot. Naruto stopped reading and looked up at that last part. Huh? Jiraiya was grinning like mad. Naruto, I said you only had to read up to chapter 2. I see that you're almost at 4. Like the book, eh? Naruto started turning a shade of red. No. I didn't like it. It's just well. Jiraiya turned on his time to act like a mentor switch. Naruto, there's nothing wrong with liking it. Heck, you're right at that age where you should be curious. And I hope you are your little brat. I don't know what I would do if my student was bent. Naruto had no idea what the hell he just said. Huh. What's bent? Jiraiya realized his blunder. How to explain this without destroying any innocence the kid might still have. Jiraiya of course forgot to take into account the fact that by letting Naruto read that book much of said innocence had already gone poof. Well it's um playing for the other team. Yeah, playing for the other team. Jiraiya sagely nodded. This made Naruto even more confused. 
playing for the other team? Are we playing a game? Hiraya decided that subtlety wasn't going to work on Naruto. So he told it like it is. It means you like guys the same way you like your Sakura-chan, you stupid brat. A shade of red on Naruto's face was almost instantly replaced by a pale white color. What the heck is that? No, I like Sakura-chan. Not Sasuke. Oh my god I'm going to be sick Naruto said, pretending to vomit. Hiraya chuckled as he hit Naruto in the back, going along with the vomit gesture. Well, I wouldn't hold it against you if you did. But nonetheless, it brings me great joy that you are a fellow partaker in the pleasure that is the female body. You like Sakura, right Naruto nodded vigorously. So what is it you like about her? Naruto didn't even have to think. She's Sakura-chan. Hiraya waited. And waited. And waited. As they continued on for the next minute, he realized that that was it. What the heck? He likes her because she's who she is. Granted, that's about as pure and genuine a love as love can get, but Jiraiya had a feeling that that's not exactly what Naruto meant. So you like her because of her name? That's Kinda, I don't know lame Jiraiya deadpanned. Naruto was flabbergasted. Hiro Senen did not just defile the sacred love that he had for Sakura-chan. I don't like her because of her name. Although her name is really pretty too Naruto trailed off and mused for a bit. Then he derived some moral fiber from somewhere and continued on. Sakura-chan is really pretty. She's really nice and cares about everyone. Naruto was pleased with himself and looked at Jiraiya with a smirk, daring the older man to beat that. Jiraiya went into the classic I'm thinking pose and replied, from what I've seen with you and your interactions with your team, Naruto, forgive me if that's not exactly the impression I got. Jiraiya looked down at Naruto, who was shooting questions from his eyes. Your Sakura-chan is really pretty. Sure, but kiddo, did you see the forehead on her? You could hang a billboard on that thing. Naruto was incensed and about to blow a head gasket when Jiraiya continued on. Okay, that was a joke, sorry brat. I'm sure she's pretty. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder and all that. But let's see. Jiraiya got a little serious. You think she's really nice. Whenever I see you talking to her, it ends with her punching your lights out. Does she care about everyone? If the definition of everyone has changed in recent times to mean Ichiha Sasuke then sure, she cares about everyone. Naruto was about to make a valiant rebuttal when Jiraiya held a hand out to stop him and proceeded to finish. Yeah kid, she's your first love. I know how that goes in Wetnet. I'm sorry to be the one to break this to you, but she doesn't love you. I'm not sure if she even likes you. Naruto tore his gaze from Jiraiya and looked at the ground, kicking a rock as he walked on. Proof be told, he knew where she stood. He always shrugged off her punches with a smile and took each rejection as a sign that she would eventually notice him. Jiraiya sighed. Crushing a first love is always harsh. To do it now of all times probably wasn't the smartest thing he's ever done, but you have to pull rotten teeth out before the entire mouth has to be removed. Doesn't mean pulling out the tooth doesn't hurt though. He decided the brat needed some cheering up. Did you want true love? Naruto looked back up again, his facial expression shooting a question at him. Then look no further than my book. It will teach you all about true love, how to attain it, and all the joys of the female body. If you get to chapter 6, it'll even tell you all about the joys of love Mac. Naruto kicked Jiraiya in the shin before that statement ended. Hard. As Jiraiya yelped like a little girl and hopped around while furiously massaging his quickly bruising shin, Naruto chuckled lightly to himself. Stupid Hiro Senen, you really are a stupid Hiro Senen, you know that Naruto was saying, but now with a slight smile on his face. Jiraiya resumed a normal walking gait and smiled one of his rare genuine smiles. His shin didn't really hurt, but his antics brought a smile to the kid's face. So I'm told, so I'm telling you little brat. Don't worry about it. You're still young. You will come across many more women in your life, all the more because of your association with me, the famed Toad Sage. As a certain Kanoha says, you are still in the springtime of youth. Naruto got a vision of Guy and Rock Lee doing their signature thumbs up pose with their absurdly white teeth out shining the sun. He involuntarily shuddered. Don't remind me Iro Senen. Jiraiya grinned. As he was about to reply, the town was finally visible to them on the horizon. Hey Brad, we're almost in town. You want to race to the gate. If you win, I will teach you a stupendously awesome game that will make you a ninja legend. If I win, you have to pay for dinner. Are you up for it? Naruto's response was to sprint off towards the village, yelling back, I'll see you in town Iro Senen. Don't keep me waiting too long, I don't want to be old like you. Jiraiya stopped for a second, taking great offense at the verbal jab. Old. I am not old you little brat. I am in my prime. You are too young to see that. Jiraiya nodded to himself at his conclusion and proceeded to run full speed towards the town. He caught up to Naruto in no time and passed by him. As much as I want to teach you, I'm sorta broke and need you to pay, so I have to win this race, Naruto. No hard feelings okay? Naruto was in awe of how fast the old man could move. He could really move if given the proper motivation. 
Naruto decided to store this bit of information in his head as he slowed down to a jog, he wasn't going to catch up to Jiraiya. While jogging, he decided that, although he loved Sakura, she didn't love him, and that wasn't going to change anytime soon. He allowed himself to daydream about falling in love. Is it really possible for me to fall in love with someone who'll accept me for me? And for what I am? Naruto did some thinking and came to a conclusion. Yeah, there has to be. Hiro Senen said I'll meet many more women in my life, and at least one has to like me at some point. Satisfied with what he came up with, he put on his signature smile and came to a stop at the gate of the town, where a grinning Jiraiya was waiting for him. Where is she, Hiro Senen Naruto asked. You said she'd be in this town tonight. Jiraiya was pondering the same thing. Well Tsunade wouldn't have traveled as fast as we were, and this is the only town for miles, so she either came here or is camping out somewhere, and knowing Tsunade, she needs sake every day if she's traveling, and she already would have drank all of the sake she packed on the first day, so she has to be here. Jureya concluded. Naruto blanched and looked at Jureya. Wow Iro Senen. That actually made sense. I guess you're not a stupid Iro Senen at least. Jureya sighed as he stopped looking around for Tsunade and looked at Naruto. Kid, even in the way you refer to me, I'm an Iro Senen. Sages are not stupid, you little brat. He ruffled Naruto's hair a bit before looking for Tsunade again. Naruto had already dispelled the 20 shadow clones he made to look for Tsunade. He had looked in every inn he could find, but to no avail. She wasn't even out in the streets. Then again, he was going off what Jureya told him to look for, which was for a really old blonde woman with beautiful face a man could ever want to see. Jureya had checked all the bars but shockingly came up empty. He figured between him and Naruto that they checked every place she would have been. He noticed a lot of little kids running around even with the sun almost completely set, meaning this was a kid-friendly town, which meant the town probably didn't have casinos or any shady institutions. If Tsunade managed to find an underground gambling site, they weren't going to find her if they searched all night. Jureya was actually putting some real effort into finding Tsunade, he and Naruto had already spent three weeks on this goose chase. He had not kept up to date with his spy network, and the only plus he could see out of the entire trip was that Naruto had mastered two of the three steps to the dot, but most importantly, he had not visited a brothel in three weeks. Three weeks. Iro Senen. Naruto said, pulling Jiraiya out of his thoughts. Since we can't find her, I think we should get a room or something before it gets completely dark out. Jiraiya could find no fault in that logic. I remember seeing a really good inn not too far from here while I was looking for Tsunade San. Jureya raised an eyebrow at the last word Naruto said. Tsunade san. What the heck? Since when do you respect people you little brat? Naruto shifted his feet and gave the reply, well Tsunade san's it, right Jureya nodded. Hirachimaru may have been the biggest jerk I've ever seen, but there was no doubting that he was crazy strong. You might be an hero senin, but you're probably really strong too. Jureya looked very smug at this. It's not that hard to believe that she would be equally as strong as you guys. Jureya chuckled. Oh Naruto, you have no idea how strong Tsunade is. No idea at all. Yeah Naruto, she's plenty strong. But I'm a little miffed at how she gets so much respect from you, and I get nothing. Tsunade gambles, has a drinking problem, anger management issues, is physically violent, is under it to hide how she really looks, and won't allow herself to be found by us. Jureya basically yelled at the end of his rant. Naruto chuckled. Hiro Senen, I, insert stomach growling noise here. Jureya laughed uproariously. Hungry huh, you little brat. Naruto looked away sheepishly. Yeah, we haven't eaten anything since we stopped for lunch, what, 8 hours ago Naruto nodded. Okay, well it just so happens that we're standing right in front of a family restaurant Naruto looked to his left, and wouldn't you know it, they were. He realized that he should pay more attention to what was around him. It certainly would help him in the long run, being a shinobi and all that. Jureya grinned when Naruto looked to his left, the kid had no idea that they were right in front of a restaurant. He'd have to use this to one-up the brat later. Well brat, I did beat you to the town, so if you want to grab some food, let's go Jureya said. Naruto only shook his head as he walked into the restaurant, with a still grinning Jureya right behind him. Okay brat, go get us a table Tsunade Jureya exclaimed pointing his finger at a table occupied by a woman. The blonde woman at the table perked up at hearing her name, and when she saw who it was, she couldn't suppress her shock. Jureya. What are you doing here? Naruto was flabbergasted. That was Tsunade. He thought all of them were 50 years old. That blonde lady looked like she was still in her twenties crying out loud. How is she? Naruto decided to voice his thoughts. Hiro Senen, aren't they supposed to be 50 years old? Jureya looked at Naruto, a little confused. Yeah, so Naruto then replied, well that lady over there doesn't look 50. Jureya laughed at this and gave Naruto a mild nudie. I said she was trying to hide a real appearance, remember? Naruto did a mental facipum. Oh yeah, Jureya put his hand on Naruto's back. Come on kid, let's go over to Tsunade's table. Maybe you luck out and she'll pay for dinner for us. Naruto snorted. Yeah right. 
if she's anything like you, she'll make me pay for her too. Hiraya and Naruto sat down across from Tsunade. A waiter quickly came by, gave the two a glass of water, and asked if they were ready to order. Jiraiya began to skim through the menu as Naruto asked what ramen flavors they had. The waiter looked contrite as he replied, I'm sorry, but we do not have ramen on our menu. Naruto was in shock. Full-fledged shock. What kind of restaurant doesn't serve ramen? This broke the second of his three absolute laws of the universe. That all restaurants serve at least one flavor of ramen. Then again, his first law was that he would love Sakura-chan until the end of his days. He believed that the first law would be broken someday too. So basically in one day, his entire universe was turning inside out. Okami, Naruto groaned. You don't serve ramen here. What am I supposed to eat? Huh? The waiter looked slightly miffed. I am sorry that we don't serve ramen here, but please do take a look at our menu. There are several dishes that I am sure you will find to your liking. Naruto didn't think so, but he looked at the menu anyway. Sure enough, nothing jumped out at him. Shaking his head, he began to wonder what he was going to do for dinner. During the entire exchange, Tsunade was slightly grinning to herself. Kami, he looked exactly like Nawaki did. Same attitude too. Nawaki loved tonkatsu as much as this kid seems to love ramen. Maybe, Tsunade intervened on the waiter's behalf. Waiter, one order of tonkatsu for the brat here. The waiter nodded, and Naruto just about exploded. What? You can't order for me. I have to pay for my own meal. I'm going to get what I want. Waiter-san, five bowls of Maizo ramen please. The waiter by now was getting exasperated. Once again, we don't serve ramen here. Please do try the tonkatsu, it is a dish that our restaurant does quite well, if I do say so myself. Naruto was about to send a retort when Jureya cut him off. Naruto, ever wonder why you're so darn short Naruto nodded. You only eat ramen, you little brat. You need to diversify what you eat, so you intake the right nutrients so you can grow taller. Healthier too for that matter. Now eat the tonkatsu. Jeez, it won't kill you. Naruto leaned back into his seat, clearly unhappy with the whole mess. Jiraiya sighed. I'll pay for your tonkatsu Naruto, so can you enjoy it now Naruto looked up, and he nodded vigorously. Of course, you're still going to pay for my dinner. Waiter, three bottles of sake and two orders of curry rice for me. The waiter nodded, and left. Naruto stood up from his seat and loomed over Jiraiya, pointing his finger at him. What the heck, Ursenin? Are you trying to bleed me dry? I had no idea you ate so much, or I never would have accepted that stupid deal. Gureya put his right hand on Naruto's head and forced him to sit down. Geez brat, my meal costs less than five bowls of Maizo ramen, so what's got your panties in a knot? Naruto looked away, mumbling about old perverts needing to get drunk to feel young again. Gureya was about to show Naruto how young he exactly was via a painful punch to the face when Tsunade intervened on Naruto's behalf. So Jiraiya, who's the brat? Jiraiya shifted his focus to Tsunade. He's Uzumaki Naruto, the number one most hyperactive knucklehead ninja in all of Konoha he finished with a grin. Tsunade perked up at hearing the surname and looked at Naruto seriously for the first time. Uzumaki. So he's. Jiraiya put up a hand to stop her. Yep. He's that. Tsunade shook her head and took another shot of sake. That was only her second one, so she still had a ways to go yet before she'd start yelling and throwing chairs around. Besides, this time, Jiraiya was here, so the damage she could do would be limited. Grinning at this knowledge, she immediately took her third shot of sake. Jiraiya, noticing this, immediately said, I'm not paying for the damages. Tsunade smirked. You was dot she took her fourth shot of sake. So what brings you to the outskirts of Konoha? Jiraiya decided it was time to be serious. You know that Arachimaru led an attack on Konoha and killed Siratobi sensei Tsunade looked away, pouring herself a fifth shot, but not drinking it right away. Yeah I heard dot she noticed Naruto looking down dejectedly, with a hint of tears in his eyes. Jiraiya was about to reply when the waiter arrived. Here is your sake, sir. The waiter put three bottles of sake on their table and gave Jiraiya a shot glass. Your meal will arrive shortly. The waiter left to take the orders from another table. Jiraiya poured himself a shot of sake and drank it, reveling in the pleasure that was alcohol. Good stuff. He poured himself another shot. Picking it up, he turned to Tsunade. The village needs a new Tsunade. The council has determined that it will be you. They sent Naruto and me to bring you back to Konoha, so you can begin your reign of terror as the god in Hokage. Tsunade finished her sixth shot of sake and stared at Jiraiya impassively. Naruto did not take this news impassively. She's the next Hokage I thought we came to get her so she can fix Kakashi Sensei and Sasuke. What the heck Iro Senen? Didn't you say she gambles a lot? And look at her, she's already on her seventh shot of sake, so she obviously has drinking issues. And, no thanks. I decline. Tsunade said. And, and a Naruto finished lamely. Jiraiya chuckled. Those words sound familiar. I recall you using them when I asked you out all those years ago. Tsunade smirked. Naruto blanched. Why don't you want to be he asked. 
for the love of Kami-sama, he couldn't fathom why anyone would turn down the opportunity to be dot hell, he'd wear the hat right now if the council gave it to him. Soon Aid shrugged. She was already slowing down. Eight shots and I'm already like this. Oh this night is going to suck I have no love for that village. Naruto's shock at why someone would refuse to be a was quickly dissipating into righteous anger. How can you not love your village? Hiro Senen told me that you were the granddaughter of the first it's basically your village. How can you hate it? How can you not want to be if they asked me to do it, I'd say yes in a heartbeat and be right away. Naruto all but shouted the last few words. Tsunade blocked him out as best she could, but she couldn't block out the words he was shouting at the end. Be right away. Okami sama. Tsunade gave her full attention to Naruto. So brat, you want to be or something? Naruto nodded and gave Tsunade his trademark smile. Yep. I'm going to be the greatest that ever lived. Tsunade flinched and physically moved back into her chair. She had heard those exact words from the two most important males in her life. To see someone who looked so much like Nawaki say those words to her again was something she did not want. It brought back the worst memories of her life. The memories of their deaths. In Nawaki's case, his bloodied body was brought back to the morgue, barely recognizable. In Dan's case, she failed to save his life, even with all of her supposedly legendary medical dot, the memory of his blood on her hands was something she could never forget. The table had fallen into an uncomfortable silence at the end of Naruto's declaration. Tsunade was idly drinking shots when she was in the mood, Jiraiya was doing much of the same thing, except he was additionally scoping out the restaurant for attractive women. Naruto was lost in his own thoughts. The waiter came back with the food to break the table out of its reverie. Here you are sir he said as he handed Jiraiya his curry rice. And here you are he said as he handed Naruto his plate of tonkatsu. Jiraiya grinned at Naruto. Well kid, thanks for the meal as he greedily dug into his plate. Naruto tried a piece of his tonkatsu and realized the thing tasted great. Not quite Maizo ramen level, but it might beat out shrimp ramen. He came to the conclusion that this tonkatsu was quite edible and delicious and proceeded to tear through his meal at a lightning pace. Tsunade chuckled when she saw Naruto's reaction to the tonkatsu. So brat, does it taste any good? Naruto was stuffing his mouth with tonkatsu pieces and consequently couldn't give a verbal reply. So he just nodded as he proceeded to choke himself to death with tonkatsu. Naruto wolfing down tonkatsu reminded Tsunade of when the waki used to do the same thing. She loved her little brother dearly and the memory brought a faint smile to her lips. Drinking does help recalling the good old days, after all. After about five minutes, Naruto was done with his dinner. He leaned back, very satisfied with the meal. He was nowhere near full, but he decided he'd order some more after he digested what he already ate. Jiraiya wasn't even done with his first plate, but he looked like he was savoring his meal, rather than pretending to be in an eating contest. Tsunade was already getting a buzz and was getting quite bored of just watching the two of them eat. She pulled out a deck of cards and asked if Jiraiya wanted to play a hand. If she wins, Jiraiya lends her some capital for gambling purposes. If Jiraiya won, she'd listen to what he had to say before telling him no. Jiraiya agreed, and Tsunade began to shuffle. It was then that a young girl with short black hair walked into the restaurant. She had on a black kimono with a white undershirt. She would have looked perfectly plain had it not been for the small pig cradled in her arms. She looked around and found the familiar blonde hair that her master had. Tsunade Sama. The veterinarian said that Tauntin is perfectly fine and that there's no need to worry about her leg she yelled as she ran over to the table. Tsunade looked up during her shuffling. Oh Shizun, Tauntin's okay then. Shizun slowed down as she approached the table. She noticed that there were two people sitting with her teacher. Upon closer inspection, she realized that the older man was none other than the toad sage, Jureya Sama, and she proceeded to introduce herself. Jureya Sama. It is a pleasure to meet you. Shizun said and bowed. Jureya stopped eating for a second to look up at Shizun. He recognized her as Dan's niece. She had grown up a lot since he last saw her 14 years ago. However, he thought she remained a part of the civilian population of the village. He was shocked to see her traveling with Tsunade. His train of thought next led him to his super pervert ways. He checked her out and was sorely disappointed. Shizun had not filled out at all. She might have been a B cup at the very highest and had nowhere near the appeal her goddess of a teacher had. Good evening, Shizun. Jureya replied. I had no idea that you left the village with Tsunade. I thought you remained a part of the civilian population of the village. Shizun blushed and gave her reply, absently stroking Tauntin's neck while doing so. After Uncle Dan's death, I had no family left in Kanoha. Tsunade Sama was the only family I had left. I had no desire to be put into an orphanage, so I begged Tsunade Sama to let me follow her. It took some doing, but I managed to get her to say yes. Ureya nodded, realizing that that made perfect sense. Dan was a, and there was no way Shizun wouldn't be a ninja. Well Shizun, why don't you take a seat and order something? Shizun smiled. I'd be glad to meet Jureya-sama, though I have a question. 
who is that sleeping boy to your right? Hiraya looked to his right, and wouldn't you know it, Naruto fell asleep. It was pretty late, well past the kid's normal bedtime. He chuckled to himself. Kid's still a little brat. I forget that at times. Hiraya grabbed Naruto and started to lightly shake him. Naruto, wake up. Wake up you little brat. Naruto proceeded to start snoring. Shizun giggled at this, wondering who the cute little boy was. Jiraiya, realizing his efforts were getting him nowhere, proceeded to pull out the ultimate Naruto alarm clock. He bent over and whispered in Naruto's ear, all you can eat free Maizo Raymond. Naruto woke up instantly, looking around excitedly for the free Raymond. When there was none and he only saw a laughing Jiraiya, Naruto was seething and said, Ga. Hiro Senen. Why did you wake me up? And where's my free all you can eat Maizo Raymond? Tsunade laughed out loud when she realized what Jiraiya did to get him to wake up. Shizun's giggles escalated into a soft laughter of her own when she too realized what happened. Turning his head towards Tsunade, Naruto grinned sheepishly. I guess there's no free Raymond, ha dot then he turned his head towards the other source of laughter. What he saw was a lightly laughing girl who looked to be a couple years older than him. She had a pig cradled in her arms and she was wearing a plain black kimono. But that wasn't what Naruto was looking at. No, his attention was fixated on her smile. Her smile was more endearing than any he'd ever seen before. It was full of amusement and warmth. Just by looking at her smile Naruto began to feel warm inside and strangely enough, very happy. He couldn't describe what he was feeling. Never in his life had he seen anything so beautiful. Holy cow, who is she? Naruto thought. Shizun stopped her laughing to introduce herself to the little boy. He looked like a deer caught in headlights. Must be because I'm holding a pig in my arms. Shizun mused. She kept her smile up and introduced herself to the little blonde. Hello there. My name's Shizun, and this little piglet here is Tauntin. Say hi, Tauntin. Tauntin gave a little squeal as a hello. Shizun's smile got brighter after Tauntin said hi to Naruto. Tauntin was awfully shy, and for her to greet anyone without running away was a major accomplishment. Turning her smile to Naruto, she asked him, and what's your name? Naruto, transfixed by how darn pretty she looked, could only manage his name. Naruto, he said. Yuzumaki Naruto. Naruto-kun, a Shizun said. Well it's a pleasure to meet you, Naruto-kun. Naruto had gotten past the shock of seeing such a tender smile being aimed at him, and smiled brightly back at Shizun. It's nice to meet you too, shizun san Naruto replied. Shizun chuckled and looked a little peeved. Naruto-kun, no need to attach the san. You're making me feel old when you do that. Just call me Shizun. Naruto readily agreed and was secretly pleased that she had taken to calling him using the kun suffix so easily. During the exchange, Jiraiya and Tsunade were focused on their poker hand. Jiraiya had just traded in three cards, getting himself a full house, aces over nines. He was grinning like mad inside, but managed to look impassive on the outside. He really should have upped the ante on this little bet. Tsunade wasn't the legendary sucker for nothing. Though now that he thought about it, is that title of hers a double entendre? Oh boy. He just did it. He couldn't stop the lecherous grin from exploding out onto his face. Tsunade decided to trade in four cards, having flopped nothing except for the ace of hearts. As she went to trade her cards in, she saw Jurea's face and knew the eternal pervert was probably thinking about her in some shape or form. Tsunade shot him an icy glare that promised pain in the not too distant future. Throwing her four cards down, she drew four cards from the deck. She saw that the first three cards were the ten, queen, and king of hearts. The last card was hidden because of the way she picked them up. Tsunade put on her poker face, but it was difficult to keep up because adrenaline was shooting through her system faster than Jurea can run after getting caught peeping. She then peeled the last card out from behind the king of hearts to reveal the two spades. Groaning out loud, because at this point she had nothing, and she knew Jurea had something, she threw her cards down and took her eleventh shot of sake. Ami, luck is never on my side. Jurea laughed wholeheartedly, showing Tsunade his full house. Tsunade narrowed her eyes at his beautiful hand and resigned herself to her fate. Okay Jurea, let's hear the nonsense. Jurea was about to start when he noticed that Naruto and Shizun really hit it off. They were talking to each other so naturally you'd think the little brat never had any insecurities. Being serious for a moment as he knew that the conversation between their apprentices could go a long way in developing Naruto's social skills and confidence, Jiraiya motioned the waiter to bring him two more bottles of sake, Tsunade at some point went through his second bottle, bring her shot count up to 19. Yo Tsunade, what the council wanted me to tell you will actually take quite a while. Jiraiya said, making Tsunade groan in disgust. She decided she needed to be half sober for this, so she went through a quick set of hand signs and performed a medical on her abdomen. When Jurea asked her a question through a raised eyebrow, she told him, I think I only want to hear this once, so I purged my system of some of the alcohol. She grinned. 
If it weren't for this, I'd have died of alcohol poisoning so long ago Hatsune had finished inordinately proud of herself. Hiraya only shook his head at his former teammate as he got up and sat down at a table a couple tables away from Naruto and Shizune. The two didn't even notice Jiraiya leaving, they were too engrossed in their own conversation. When Tsunade raised her eyebrow, Jiraiya just motioned for her to sit down at his table. When she did, he whispered to her, some of this information is sensitive. It involves Naruto to an extent. Shizune, who I assume is a leaf ninja Tsunade nodded, isn't a, so she isn't allowed to hear A-rank secrets. Right on cue, the sake arrived, and Tsunade took her 20th shot of the night. It only feels like shot number 3. Jiraiya could only chuckle as he began to tell the message that the council wanted him to give to Tsunade. In the back of his mind, he hoped that Shizune would help Naruto break out of his shell. Wow, Naruto come. To have to fight against an air rank from Kurigakur on your first sea mission is very impressive. Shizune said. It speaks volumes of how skilled your team is that none of you died in the mission. She was impressed. It was ridiculous for them to continue on after meeting the Demon Brothers, which made the mission at least a B rank right there. To have to fight Zabuza and his protege not too soon after made it a borderline air rank mission, which not even a team of seasoned soldiers are sent on. She frowned at Kakashi's judgment, who put his team in a situation that could have, nine times out of ten would have, killed at least one of them. Naruto smiled at the compliment. Very rarely did someone pay so much attention to him. He could count the number of people on one hand. Hiroka, old man Hokage, and the Ichiraku father and daughter combo. Out of those four, Am was the only girl, and she was always busy making his ramen when he came by for a meal, so she really didn't get to talk to him as much as the other three. In that sense, Shizun was the first girl to really sit down and listen to him, and she even seemed to enjoy it. Naruto couldn't remember a happier time in his life than what he was feeling right now. Shizun chan Naruto began. He called her this by mistake earlier on, and Shizun didn't take offense. If anything, she seemed to blush a little, and Naruto took that as an okay to call her that way. How come you're traveling with Tsunade san An innocent enough question. But to answer the question, she had to remember the worst memory of her life. When the last family member she had fell in combat, Shizun faltered, but put on a grin nonetheless. She noticed that Naruto was very hesitant to ask her anything in the beginning of their conversation. She had managed to get him to be more talkative, and she didn't want to deny him an answer, which she believed would have made him be quiet for good. She didn't want that. She could see the same pain in her eyes that she saw in her own eyes so many years ago. Stealing herself, she began to answer his question. Naruto-kun, you learned about the third great shinobi war in the academy, right Naruto nodded. He didn't remember much about it. More correctly, he didn't remember paying attention to Aruka while he was lecturing the class about it. But he did remember what the Yandane did during the war. The Naruto hero worshipped the greatest of them all. Um, sorta. That was the one where Yandame sama killed a lot of Iwa ninja and earned the nickname the Yellow Flash, right Naruto tried hesitantly. Shizu nodded. Yes, the third war was between Kanoha, Kumo, and Iwa. At the time, it wasn't uncommon for tens of ninja to die daily. Naruto blanched. Outside of the invasion, Naruto didn't know anyone who died on a mission for Kanoha. Shizun chuckled, though there was no mirth behind it. Yes, hard to believe, isn't it? Naruto nodded. Shizun sighed, took a deep breath and continued on. She wasn't looking at him now, she seemed to be lost in her own thoughts. My uncle Dan was a soldier for Kanoha during the war. Naruto still. The word was didn't imply anything good. My parents were killed in a Kumo ambush, and I would have been just another child added to the growing responsibility of the orphanage, had Uncle Dan not taken me and Dot Shizun, then did the oddest thing. She smiled. The time I had with Uncle Dan was some of the happiest of my life. I knew he was a Dot I knew what that meant. I knew that he killed enemy ninjas to protect our village, and that he saw friends and comrades dying around him, every day Dot Shizun then looked right into Naruto's eyes. But you know what, Naruto-kun? he never brought that back home. He told me how he had lost his sister to an illness before I was born. He told me he was over it, but no one ever really is, and I knew that each time he came back to the village after a mission, he went to her grave first before coming home. Shizun took a deep breath, leaned back into her chair ever so slightly, and continued on. But none of that was important to me. I didn't know it then, but I know now that he was trying to do for me what he couldn't do for his sister. All I knew at the time was that he was the only one who cared for me and loved me and he always came back. Did you know that Naruto Naruto shook his head, but she wasn't looking at him. She seemed to get angry, ever so slightly. He always returned from his missions. He'd come back well before he said he would, which always made me happy. It became such that I took it for granted that he'd always come back. Naruto was holding on to her every word. His attention was so focused on her that even Jiraiya would have praised how hard he was concentrating. Shizun had lost herself in her retelling and almost forgot that she was just supposed to answer Naruto's simple question of why she was traveling with Tsunade. 
Shizune only meant to give Naruto some background on what happened, but once she started, she just couldn't stop. She had held back her emotions for 14 long years. That was long enough. The Hokage assigned Dan on a mission. Naruto noticed that she no longer called him uncle. It was simple enough. A B rank mission to scout out the borders for a suspected gathering of Iwa Ninja. They were supposed to confirm the massing of Iwa troops and come back with a rough idea of how many ninja were there. Dan's team went the day after. He had already done this mission several times. I didn't even worry about him when he left. She paused. Naruto quickly saw why she was trying to hold back the tears that threatened to get out. It was a trap, Naruto kun. Shizun looked at him again and smiled. She managed to hold the tears at bay, but by doing so, had lost control of her voice. Some of their ninja had already crossed the border, and by the time Dan's team reached the border, the Iwa ninja surrounded them. The mission was supposed to last half a day. By the end of the second day, I heard that Tsunade Sama had gone against the orders of the Hokage and took a rescue team to see what happened. She found Dan on the ground. He was bleeding out and had been for hours. The Iwa ninja tortured him for information, but he refused to say anything. They harass his Kanoichi teammates to death in front of him and slit his best friend's throat because he wouldn't say anything. Naruto had turned to Shen. He was learning real fast that the life of a ninja is not fun in games. He vaguely remembered the bell test Kakashi sensei gave them when he told Sakura to kill him or Sasuke died. That lesson hit home and he thought he understood the point of the lesson. How naive he was. This was far more horrible than anything he could have even had nightmares of. Shizun shook her head and took a couple deep breaths to calm herself. He couldn't say anything about Naruto-kun. What I wanted to know was the identity of the yellow flash. If he said that, Iwa could have infiltrated the village and killed him in his sleep or hold his family hostage. And I know you know how essential the yellow flash was to being victorious in the war. Naruto nodded, his expression grim. The Yellow Flash earned that title because of a that allowed him to travel at impossible speeds with a single seal, allowing himself to overpower enemy armies alone. He had no idea that four people gave their lives to protect the Flash's identity, quite possibly saving his life and the lives of his family members. Heck, you could throw all the people of Kanoha in there as well, the war would not have been won with the Yellow Flash. Now Naruto Shizun said. Naruto looked at her after completing his train of thought. What I just told you I have not told another soul. I ask that you please keep this a secret between us, is that okay? Naruto vehemently nodded. Shizune had quite possibly told him her innermost secret and he'd sooner denounce Raymond than betray Shizune after that. The thing is, Naruto. Ninja get ambushed all the time. I told you my own parents were killed because of one. I don't know if they were tortured for information or not, but realistically, they were. Shizune said. Naruto nodded, but had no idea where she was going with this. In that case, Dan's death shouldn't have made me leave the village for 14 years and not once want to return, right Naruto got the answer to his question, though he had already surmised as much. She left because the only person in Kanoha who cared for her had been killed and she had nothing left in the village anymore. This didn't answer why she left with Tsunade Sen of all people, though, as Naruto was about to ask Shizune why she left with Tsunade, Shizune cut him off. Good Naruto. You're probably asking why I left with Tsunade Sama then, right? Naruto nodded, slightly impressed with her mind reading ability. Did she have Yamanaka blood? Shizun laughed, and Naruto flinched. This laugh did not give him the feeling of warmth that he got when he first met her. No, this laugh was mirthless, with a level of underlying fury that Naruto couldn't understand. Days before Dan died, the Yellow Flash and Jurei Sama went to the Hokage and said there was a breach of security, that their information network regarding Iowa was compromised. Heavily classified information was being leaked to the enemy, meaning someone of high rank in Kanoha was the traitor. Jurei didn't know who the leak was. He only knew that it existed. He recommended that all missions regarding I would be put on hold until either the leak was found or they received new information from a new source. The thing was, the Hokage knew that by holding missions back against Iwa, he would let Iwa get closer and closer to Kanoha. And there was no telling how long it would take Jurei to earth out the leak. Finding a new source of information on an enemy nation is hard enough, let alone having to find one that's reliable. Given an impossible situation, the Hokage did something that I will never forgive him for. Naruto's eyes widened. He waited for her to continue, but Shizune was shaking. She wasn't scared or sad or anything like that. No, she was shaking because she was having trouble containing her fury. Shizune chan Naruto said. Shizune looked at Naruto and calmed down for a second. Then Naruto asked her what the old man did, which brought back her shaking with renewed vigor. The Hokage decided to send a team out to the Iwa border to give off the illusion that we were still ignorant of their plans in an attempt to lure the spy out. Naruto closed his eyes. He knew what that meant. The plan worked, Naruto kun. It worked. The Iwa spy, extremely relieved that he hadn't been found out about yet, proceeded to do his normal duties. But by that time, Jurei Sama had narrowed down the number of potential leaks to 10. 
8 Anbu, the Yellow Flash, and Jurei Asama each followed one of the potential leaks around. The one Jurei Asama followed happened to be the leak, and he was dealt with accordingly. A major victory for the village. Shizun spat out. Naruto realized what the old man had done to Shizun. He had sent her uncle on a true suicide mission. He sent them knowing of the dangers they were going to face. He sent her uncle on a mission knowing that he wouldn't come back alive. The four deaths probably saved more lives in the long run, but how can you explain that to the survivors of the dead? Shizun was nearing the end of her answer. Well there you have it Naruto-kun. I'm sorry I dragged the answer out so long. I didn't mean to, but once I started to talk about it, I couldn't stop. I'm sorry for telling you all that Shizun couldn't stop one tear from falling. Naruto saw the tear fall. It's okay shizun chan Dadi put on his trademark smile, which got a small grin from her. I'm actually really touched that you told me all that. It means you really trust me and stuff, right? Shizun chuckled and nodded. How had this little boy wormed into her heart so quickly? She found it easier to talk to him than anybody she had met before, even Tsunade Sama. It had to be the combination of his smile and his eyes. The cheeky smile that he wears to mask what he really feels. Who did he think he was fooling? And his eyes if you look into them long enough, you see all the pain that he's endured in his life thus far, an amount far too great for someone his age. But it's because of that that he's so empathetic and can understand your pain on a level no one else can. There's just one more thing, Shizun chan Naruto began to ask. Shizun turned to face him and looked at him funny, her facial expression asking him a question. If you don't mind, Shizun chan I didn't really understand why Tsunade Sen was the one you left with. I can understand why you would want to leave, but I don't see why she wanted to. I remember her saying earlier that she didn't love the village at all. Why is that? If possible, Shizun's facial expression showed even more pain than she did during the entire retelling of her uncle's death. She took a deep breath, closed her eyes, and said in barely above a whisper words that Naruto would never forget. Oh that, Naruto-kun. That simple. She loved him. She was his fiance. And there you have it, Sune Jureya finished with a heavy sigh. Tsune did a couple small nods in acknowledgement. Most of what the council had to say didn't interest her at all. They would basically give her everything she wanted while she still lived in Kanoha, but that was a given. Nothing was offered to her that she couldn't get for herself if she became the Hokage. No, the only thing that interested her was when Jiraiya began to talk about Naruto. She had heard about Jinchuriki during her travels. She knew that they would be scorned, ridiculed, and basically outcast from society. So the fact that Naruto seemed to be as happy as he was and more or less sane, was of some interest to her. But even that was currently nowhere near as interesting as the conversation going on a couple of tables from them. Jiraiya may have been telling her what the council said, but both of them had their attention focused on Naruto and Shizun. Jiraiya remembered that day. For him, he understood where Siratobi sensei came from, the Hokage had to sacrifice a few to save the masses. The leader of a village had to look at the big picture. He never did tell this to Tsunade, because he knew she wouldn't listen, and frankly, he wasn't sure if he could have either if he was in her shoes. Tsunade was stunned. Shizun had never even spoken to her about that day. During the retelling, memories of her time with Dan flooded through her brain. The first time they met, their first date, the time she gave him her grandfather's necklace, their first night together, and lastly, the best out of all of them, the time he went on one knee, held out a ring, and promised to love her always. Tsunade faltered. She still missed him. In the dead of night, her thoughts always trailed back to him. And that day. Oh did she hate that day. Her sensei sent her fiancé to his death. He later told her he did it for the village. That was absurd. Dan needed to die to save the village. And the villagers cheered so loud when that spy was executed. They were cheering for an event that occurred because of Dan's death. They were cheering for something Dan had to die for. He also died to protect the identity of Minato Namikas, the genius prodigy that sensei was grooming to be the Yandame Hokage. Her fiancé died to protect the man who would eventually give her missions. The man who would become her leader. The man who took the title Dan had worked to get his entire life. No. She wouldn't do that. To do anything of the sort would be an insult to Dan's memory, and more importantly, of their relationship. To her, Siratobi sensei and the entire village had essentially betrayed her. She couldn't live in Kanoha any longer. She had found Shizun waiting for Dan at his house. He had mentioned Shizun to her in passing. The expression Shizun made when she told the little girl that her uncle wasn't coming back this time was something she would never forget. She managed to convince Shizun to follow her, after promising the little girl that she would never leave her. Both of them left Kanoha one year before the second war ended, and they hadn't gone back since. While sorting through her memories, Tsunade noticed Naruto walking over to her table. Hiro Senen, I'm really tired. Shizun chan's really tired too. Can we leave now? Ureya noticed that Naruto was indeed tired, as he was barely stifling yawns, and his eyes were drooping. Then he looked at Shizun. She looked emotionally spent. 
Her eyes were puffy from the few tears she couldn't hold back, and her posture could have represented exhaustion on a motivational poster. Deciding that everyone could benefit from some sleep, he himself had taken far more shots of sake than he was used to. Keeping up with Tsunade was so difficult Jureya gathered Naruto and Shizun, and Han signaled Tsunade to follow him to the nearest inn. Sadly enough, Tsunade was more sober than Jureya at the moment due to the that she developed, which she told earlier she had affectionately dubbed 20 shots of sake, can't get me drunk. The group of four entered the inn. Jureya asked for two rooms, and the innkeeper summoned two keys from what seemed to be thin air. Was he a seal master? The foursome walked to their room silently, each having their own reasons for staying quiet. When they got to the rooms, Jureya posed them all a question. My wonder he began. Who should I room with Naruto looked at Jureya, completely confused at what Jureya was saying and way too tired to give a damn. Tsunade however noticed where Jureya aimed to go with his train of thought. She closed her eyes and began to draw chakra to her fist. Jureya promptly answered Naruto. No offense Naruto, but I've been rooming with you for the past month or so. It's getting a little old, right Naruto nodded, not necessarily in agreement. He just wanted the conversation over and his body parallel to the floor, supported by a bed. Ureya continued on, pleased with Naruto's answer. Then that leaves us no choice. Shizun. You room with Naruto. I shall room with Tsunade Haim. Ureya was grinning at the sheer brilliance of his plan. It was perfectly rational that a man would want to change roommates after rooming with the same one for over a month. It was also perfectly rational that a man should room with a woman. It was also rational that he would perform research on the body of the earthly goddess, Tsunade, and through his writing, share the results of his research with all the men in the world. With that said, a man's ability to think rationally goes flying out the window after taking over 10 shots of sake. Tsunade let him know how she felt about his proposition through a chakra-powered fist that sent the super pervert 30 feet down the hallway. In the afterswing, she caught one of the two keys that Jureya dropped. All this with her eyes closed. Shizun Tsunade yelled. Shizun got out of her reverie. Hi, Tsunade saw Mitsunade open the door to their room. Get in here. Tsunade entered the room, and Shizun followed. Naruto had dozed off during the exchange, and opened his eyes only after he heard a thud from pretty far away. He saw Jureya sprawled on the floor, and didn't see Tsunade or Shizun. Having no idea what the heck just happened, he walked over to Jureya. When he got there, Naruto realized Jureya had taken a beating. His entire face was bruising rapidly, and his body seemed to be twitching. Naruto however was a little confused after giving Jiraiya's face a second look. Why the heck was Hiro Senen smiling? Hearing a low murmur from Jiraiya, Naruto bent down and heard, perfection round and firm succulent, Naruto had heard enough. He more or less had an idea of what happened. Stupid Hiro Senen probably tried to take a peek at Tsunade san and partly succeeded, upon which Tsunade beat the hell out of him. Aka Hiro Senen, muttered Naruto. He took the room key that Jureya had managed to hold onto, went into the room, found the bed, collapsed on it, and went to sleep without changing. What a day. It was the dead of night. Shizun had been sleeping for a couple hours, and she would undoubtedly need many more after what happened. Tsunade's thoughts of Dan were much more vivid tonight. Try as she might, she couldn't get him out of her thoughts to think about other things, let alone sleep. She didn't bring any sake from the restaurant, so she couldn't drink herself to sleep tonight as well. When the memory of his proposal came up again, she couldn't stop a few tears from shedding. She was glad that her love for him was this strong after all these years, but that only meant it hurt that much more. There was nothing she could do to have him back in her life. Wait a minute. Her thoughts then went to her meeting with Orochimaru earlier in the day. Flashback, Tsunade and Shizun were walking by a castle when the sun went out. Tsunade turned her head towards the sun to see what was impeding the sunlight. Her eyes flared in surprise, it was the last person she had expected to meet. Arachimaru. Arachimaru and some goofy-looking kid wearing glasses with a grey ponytail jumped down from the castle. They landed about five feet from them. Arachimaru looked at Tsunade and smiled. Tsunade narrowed her eyes in response, that smile of his meant nothing good. The glasses kid just stood behind to the right of Arachimaru, and Shizun looked at Arachimaru's arms, wondering what on earth could have done that. The silence lasted for another minute before Arachimaru broke it. Tsunade, it has been so long. You haven't aged a day I see. Perhaps you have succeeded where I am still trying and developed an immortality, if so, you must tell me all about it Orochimaru finished, turning his smile into a knowing smirk. Tsunade chuckled as she slowly blinked and turned her face away from his. When she opened her eyes, she was staring at a lone cloud lazing through the sky. Smiling, Tsunade decided that she wanted to be a little lazy today and indulge herself with some gambling and sake. It had been over a day. Orochimaru, just get to it. I don't want to be here, you don't want to be here, so why don't you just say what you have to say, so we all don't have to be here. Arachimaru agreed. There were other things that needed his attention at the moment as well. Tsunade. I paid Saratobi sensei a little visit not too long ago. Tsunade opened her eyes a little bit in surprise. 
Orochimaru then broke out into the most genuine smile he had in him. Let us just say that I am still here, Kukuku. Tsunade understood the implication. Orochimaru had killed Siratobi sensei My victory was not without injury, Tsunade Orochimaru continued on. Siratobi sensei invoked Shaiki Fuijin in a desperate attempt to kill me. He however could not finish the task and sealed only my arms. I need my arms fixed, Tsunade. She widened her eyes at the mention of the Reaper Death Seal, but mentally snorted when he asked her to heal him. For someone reputed to be a genius, he really didn't understand the emotional bonds people create between each other. Or maybe it was that he couldn't, after all, if he could, would he have done what he did. She thought of the rainy night when she had moved heaven and earth to get to Nawaki as fast as she could, upon hearing that he had been severely injured in a mission. When she arrived at where he was being treated, her teammates were waiting for her at the entrance. Jiraiya's face turned to Shen when he saw her, triggering her to break out into a cold sweat. Jiraiya told her that he had died and held her as she cried her heart out. Certainly one of Jiraiya's better moments. But not Orochimaru's. All that snake-loving git did was tell her that they had trouble identifying him due to the sheer amount of blood and damage to his face. He did that with a smile. He couldn't contain his mirth for what he told her next, that they couldn't even identify him through fingerprints because both arms were torn off. Bringing her consciousness back to the present, she gave Orochimaru once over. His arms were an unnatural black. If they were sealed off, then that meant that they were basically a tumor to his body. He would soon begin to feel the effects of necrosis if he hadn't already begun to experience them. Running through the symptoms of necrosis quickly in her head, she smiled when she went to intolerable pain. Misinterpreting her smile as a yes Orochimaru grinned widely and walked towards her when Tsunade calmly replied, no thanks. I decline. Orochimaru had a dumbfounded look on his face and immediately stopped advancing towards her. He almost looked hurt. Then she realized she had a golden opportunity to get back at him for what he said about Nawaki so many years ago. Oh this is going to be fun. Orochimaru paled, he turned a fainter shade of white. Tsunade, what, she cut him off. I don't even recognize your arms. I mean, they're so black and all. Can you even do any more she, then laughed out loud to her heart's content and proceeded to walk away, leaving a very confused Shizun to wonder what just happened. He was somewhat miffed at a response and a little bit surprised that Tsunade, who many years ago was little more than a fangirl towards him, would refuse this opportunity to help him. He didn't expect this reply from her. Quickly trying to come up with a solution, Orochimaru gave Tsunade an equally bright smile when he realized that he could offer her something he knew she couldn't refuse. Feel my arms Tsunade, and I will give back to you the two men in your life that you love more than life itself. Tsunade flinched and immediately stopped smiling. Shizun gave Orochimaru a vicious glare and prepared her for an attack. Orochimaru grinned. This had the exact effect he wanted. I will say it again Tsunade. Heal my arms and I will give you your little brother and fiancé. Tsunade narrowed her eyes and bared her teeth in anger. Shizun lost her cool and fired off two quicks at Orochimaru, who blocked it with his arms by turning his body. They flopped around uselessly, but it managed to stop the attack. Orochimaru grinned. First time these useless arms were in service, I didn't even feel that. His grin quickly faded as Tsunade threw a punch into the nearby wall, leaving nothing but dust. Her eyes held nothing but repressed fury as she quietly said, don't hell with me Orochimaru. Never one to let others have the last word, Orochimaru chuckled and left her with a parting shot. Don't forget Tsunade, I know all about you. More so than anyone else alive. Probably. Tsunade's eyes narrowed once more. Let us not forget that I know of your one, weakness. Orochimaru said as the blood trail from his arms had finally gotten to his fingertips and fell onto the ground. Tsunade, noticing the blood, instantly paled and went down on her knees, shaking and holding herself. The Budo's left eye raised up in surprise. Hematophobia. This is most surprising. For a medical ninja to be afraid of blood, the Budo shook himself out of his thoughts and addressed the shaking Tsunade. Tsunade sama, for us to bring back your brother and fiance, we will need two bodies. Please have them prepared in two days. We will meet you in the grassy fields to the east of the next town. The Budo poofed out of existence and Orochimaru sunk into the ground, leaving behind a shaking Tsunade and a troubled Shizun. And flashback, she had never even considered taking the offer. As if that snake would ever live up to his end of the bargain. But as it was, she was an emotional wreck at the moment and wasn't thinking clearly. She surprised herself by leaving the room through the window. She began to walk around the town. All the children that made the street so lively earlier on had gone back home. The streets were quiet now. There were hardly any traces of life. There wouldn't have been any if it weren't for her and two drunk men being ushered out of a bar by the owner. Get out and stay out. You are no longer welcome here yelled the owner as he slammed the door in the taller drunk's face. The two drunks beat on the door for a couple seconds, yelling incoherent gibberish. They quickly grew bored and proceeded to walk down the road. Well not walk so much as stumbling and bumping into each other every other step. 
They had managed to get about 10 steps down the road before the taller one collapsed on the shorter one, and they both fell asleep where they fell. Soon Aid walked over to the two drunks. They reeked with the smell of sake, but this wasn't anything she wasn't used to. She gave them a closer inspection. They were some ugly looking men. Their hair looked like it hadn't seen water in months and shampoo in years. They had some grotesque looking scars on their faces. They probably got cut there in some fight and didn't bother to wash it out, which triggered an infection. Both men were seriously overweight and wore little more than rags as clothes. Sune did not find the view pleasing. Ugh, even Jure is better looking than these two worthless drunks, and it hit her. Two drunks. Two sorry excuses of human beings who probably went from town to town, stopping at local bars, ordered a ton of food and sake, got roaring drunk, and had the owners kick them out to avoid having to pay. She played her meeting with Arachimaru back in her head. Her thoughts then raced through all the memories she had of Dan and the Waki. She could do it. She could have them back in her life. The only cost would be these two drunks, which no one would miss. Sunaid stared at the drunks for a good 10 minutes. At that time, the taller drunk had started to drool, and it ran down his face and into the shorter drunk's open mouth. Gross, thought Sunaid as she waged a war with herself on what she should do. Another 10 minutes later, Sunaid's face suddenly went blank. The war had been won. She silently drew a kunai and began to walk toward the two drunks. Sunaid Sama, what are you doing? Dot said a feminine voice. Sunaid flinched and looked to her right in the direction of the inn. There stood a girl wearing a dark kimono and a white undershirt. Shizun. Sunaid quietly put her kunai away. I was going to break in and steal some sake. I had trouble falling asleep and some sake would have done the trick she replied. The drunks had collapsed in front of a bar of all places. Oh well. It made for a perfectly plausible story. Shizu nodded, which Tsunade noticed. Even in the dark, her eyesight was superb. Tsunade Sama, you know breaking into a bar is illegal she began. If you wanted some sake, you know that I have an emergency stash of sake for dire situations. Tsunade was genuinely confused. But I thought I went through that stash the second day we left grass country. Shizu smiled. This time, Tsunade did not notice. Oh that. That's not the emergency stash. That's the I know you didn't pack enough sake and you're going to cry about it later stash. The real emergency stash is something you are ignorant of, so that it is used in truly desperate times she finished as her smile turned into a grin. Sunaid took a deep breath and lowered her shoulders in relief. Like Shizun, to prepare so well. She knows me better than anyone. Okay, okay. I won't break into the bar. Sunaid said. Shizun nodded and proceeded to head back to the inn. She stopped when she realized that Sunaid wasn't following her. Turning around, it looked like Tsunaid was checking the drunks to make sure they wouldn't die of alcohol poisoning in the night. Shizun waited for Tsunaid to finish, but Tsunaid said, Shizun, you head back first to the inn. I'll be there shortly. I promise she added as an afterthought. Shizun stood still for a couple of seconds before slowly making her way to the inn. She wasn't even on her fifth step when she quietly said, they won't come back. Whatever he does, it won't be them. She then began to walk back to the inn without looking back. Tsunaid closed her eyes. She had just finished her ethanol cleansing on the shorter drunk, so the two idiots should be perfectly normal by daylight. Whether they'd be happy about that, who knows. She got up and tried to go back to the inn. She tried, in the sense that she got up and faced the inn, but she did not take a single step towards it. She stood completely still for a couple seconds before turning her head at the two drunks again, giving them a really hard look. The sunlight peeked through the windows and landed on Naruto's face. Going to sleep a little later didn't seem to do him much damage. He woke up feeling every bit as energetic as he normally did. If there was anything he was proud of, it was his stamina. He looked around for Jureya, but couldn't find him. When he looked around the room, he realized that he had left Jureya outside in the hallway. Ah. Oops. He washed his face, brushed his teeth, made himself look presentable, and left the room. To his surprise, Jureya wasn't where Naruto had left him last night. He then went down to the entrance of the inn, where Jureya was waiting for him at a table. Naruto walked over to him, and to his utter delight, Jureya had a warm bowl of Maizo Raymond. Naruto was salivating and could only form the words Maizo Raymond me want before he took a breath and smelled the Raymond. That was the breaking point. He could wait no longer. He all but dive bombed into the noodles, barely picking up the chopsticks before tearing into the Raymond with a frenzy. Jureya chuckled as Naruto began to choke from trying to eat too much at once. He hit Naruto a couple times on the back as he told him to slow down. Naruto growled in response, but did slow down a bit. Jiraiya procured a cup of water from seemingly nowhere and gave it to Naruto, who took it eagerly. In less than three minutes, the bowl was completely empty. You could have washed the bowl ten times and it wouldn't look as clean as it did right then. Naruto burped and let out a satisfied sigh. Hiro Senen. You. Are. Awesome. How did you know I wanted to eat ramen for breakfast? Jiraiya shook his head. 
kid, that's all you want to eat for any meal. Naruto grinned sheepishly. Oh yeah. Gureya then looked over in the direction Naruto came from and said, Sunate and Shizune haven't come out yet. I wonder why. This train of thought went down the gutter fast. Gureya started to grin lecherously as he prodded Naruto and whispered in his ear, Hey kid. What do you think they're up to? Naruto didn't understand what was going on. Sleeping. Why? Gureya let out an exasperated sound and whispered again in Naruto's ear, You know what I think. I think they're doing the nasty. I think they're doing it. Naruto started to turn a shade of red as Jiraiya got to thinking. I should be doing research. What the heck am I still doing here? Jiraiya proceeded to leave quickly, but Naruto grabbed his arm and said, Oh no you don't, Yuiro Senen. You're not going to do your research on Shizun chan Jiraiya was about to protest, but realized the kid had a point. Tsunade walking down the forbidden path would only be glorious and deserving of him to perform research on if her partner was as equally well endowed as she was. If not, it would be a travesty. And odds are they were just sleeping anyways. Ureya sat down at their table and asked Naruto a question. So Brad, while we wait for Tsunade and your shizun chan to come down, is there anything you want to do? Naruto growled at being made fun of, but there in fact was something that he wanted to do. And this was as good a time as any to ask for it. Iro Sen and Naruto began. I'm stuck at learning and need some help. Could you Naruto faltered. Given his days at the academy, and even as a member of Team 7, it was hard for him to ask someone for help. Naruto took a deep breath, steeled himself, and put his heart on the line again. Could you help me out? Jiraiya smiled. The brat hadn't asked him for help once throughout their entire search for Tsunade. He gave Naruto the bare specifics, and Naruto somehow managed to perform what was asked of him, greatly surprising Jiraiya. But this was a fickle thing, and Season couldn't do it properly, and that with proper tutelage. How was a genin supposed to figure it out on his own? Then he realized that Naruto had taken a big step in asking him for help, and further realized that Naruto had trusted him enough to ask. Thanks kid, I won't let you down. Gureya stood up with a yawn, clearly bored with it all. Yeah, sure Brad. It's not like I have anything to do anyways. Come on, let's go work on it somewhere private. Gureya led the way out of the inn. Naruto followed him quietly without uttering a word. No one saw the huge smile on his face. I just don't get it, Hiro Sen and Naruto exclaimed as he fell on his butt, exhausted. He had been at it for over two hours, and no luck. He just couldn't get the third step down. Gureya just stared at Naruto. The kid did get it. He hadn't had this much success in training anyone since, well, ever. He tried to teach Kakashi, the Yandame student, but that ended up disastrously. In fact, in his frustration, Kakashi gave an all-out effort in creating the, only to come up with a ball of lightning that sounded like a thousand birds chirping. Kakashi later found out that the thing he made was an extremely effective assassination, but it required much more chakra than the dot Jureya just told him if it works for you, great. Now he was with Kakashi's student. The kid had progressed further than Kakashi ever had. He understood the concept of swirling the chakra in different directions, without having each flow of chakra be impeded by another flow going in a different direction. He had managed to concentrate so hard that he burned a hole in his hand, which made the chakra flow faster, which added power to the technique. What Naruto could form was the dot he just had to do the third step, which was to cover what he could already form with a thin yet strong layer of chakra that prevented the swirling chakra from escaping out, maximizing the damage inflicted at one spot. Naruto at the moment looked extremely upset with himself. He looked like he was ready to give up. Jiraiya decided it was time to be a little serious and let Naruto know just how close he was. Naruto. Jiraiya said, which made Naruto lift his head up and look at Jiraiya. You have no idea, no idea at all, at how much progress you've made so far. Naruto looked at Jiraiya dumbly and began to protest. But Iro Senen. I can't do the third step. It's so hard. It takes every bit of control I have to even form it up to the second step, and that's with the cage bunshin. Jiraiya chuckled and decided to let Naruto know the history of him trying to teach them. Did, I've tried to teach them to several ninjas in the past. They were all top-notch ninja who had outstanding records as members of Anbu. None of them got up to where you are right now. You have come the farthest out of anyone I have tried to teach. Naruto went still for a moment before breaking into an ear-splitting grin. You really mean that Iro Senen? You're not trying to pull a fast one on me are you? Are you Naruto was jumping up and down, his previous exhaustion completely forgotten. Ureya laughed out loud in a manner similar to a fat dude who climbs down chimneys and gives free presents near the end of each year. I kid you not Naruto. It's the truth. Naruto started jumping around faster, ridiculously pleased with himself. Ureya began talking again. But, I did say that the third step was the hardest part. Naruto stopped his jumping and mumbled something about ruining his moment. The third step isn't the hardest part conceptually. It's in fact, the easiest to understand. It's just the hardest to do. There's nothing you can really do to learn it faster. 
It basically comes down to chakra control, pure and simple. If you have the control, you can do it. If not, you can't. That's all there is to it. Naruto looked down at the ground upon learning of this. So this means I can't do it, Hadati was blinking back tears. I tried so hard to learn this, Hiro Senen, I really did. I thought I could do it, but now you're telling me that I can't. Hiraya chuckled and ruffled Naruto's hair a bit before giving his reply. I didn't say you can't learn it ever. I meant that you can't do it now with your current level of chakra control. All you have to do is work really hard on your chakra control. Practice tree climbing until it becomes second nature for you to do so. Practice water walking until you it's no different to you than it is to walk on solid earth. Practice holding a leaf to your head until you don't even realize that you're doing it. If you work on your chakra control, there is no way in hell that you won't be able to use it someday. Jureya finished confidently. Naruto looked at Jureya with awe. He could still learn and not only that, the Iro Senen gave him some additional training that would help him become Hokage. In a couple sentences, Naruto's respect for the Toad Sage had risen several notches. Iraya laughed wholehearted at Naruto's expression. Yeah, I only teach the best you know. Naruto grinned. I think Tsunade and Shizun are definitely up by now. Heck, it's almost lunchtime. Knowing her, she's at that restaurant again on her 30th shot of sake. Let's just go there first. I'll bet you she's there. Naruto chuckled and shook his head. 30 shots by lunch. Holy crap, sure enough, Tsunade and Shizun had woken up and were currently eating lunch when Jiraiya and Naruto had entered the restaurant. Shizun, upon noticing Naruto, gave him a warm smile and waved for him to hurry up. Naruto hesitated just for a second before breaking out his trademark smile and hurrying over to her. It looks like she's okay. Jiraiya chuckled. Young people love how sweet it is. He briefly wondered if, in a couple years, he would be performing his research on the two of them. He then looked at the two. One was a hyperactive midget, and the other was a reserved older woman. Nah, Naruto took a seat opposite of Shizun. Naruto-kun, I ordered two plates of tonkatsu for you. I saw that you were hungry after only eating one last night. Shizun said. Naruto was extremely pleased. She understood that he wasn't completely satisfied with one plate, and she had ordered ahead of time, so that it would get here much sooner. Naruto only had to wait a couple of minutes until the waiter brought the tonkatsu. Very hungry from training for the past two hours, Naruto dug into his plate with vigor. Shizun chuckled when she saw how eagerly he was eating. She poured some water into an empty glass, patiently waiting for him to start choking on his food from eating too fast. On cue, Naruto began to cough, and she gave him the cup of water, for which he was extremely grateful. Ah, Ryu. I cold a died there. Thanks Shizun-chan. Naruto said before he renewed his attack on his plate. Shizun had already finished her meal and was quietly sipping on a cup of tea while amusing herself by watching Naruto eat. Tsunade and Jureya were quietly chatting about some of the finer details about what they talked about last night. Once that was done, she asked where the hell he was this morning. Jureya Tsunade began. Shizun and I waited over an hour for you two to show up. We thought you were still sleeping. I got sick of waiting and opened the door to your room to find you guys not there. I figured that you guys came down here to get something to eat, but you weren't here either. I was going to go to another restaurant when they brought this really expensive looking sake bottle, and well, you know me, she finished with a grin. Tuckling, Jureya took a sip of his tea and responded. We were up before you too. I already ate, and I found some miso ramen that someone threw away, and I gave it to Naruto for breakfast. Naruto stopped eating for a second to look at Jureya in utter shock, while Shizu narrowed her eyes at Jureya in distaste at what he had done. Laughing out loud, he told them it was a joke, and would Naruto please learn what a napkin was. He turned his attention back to Tsunade. I was teaching Naruto for a while, we were looking for you too. He almost has it, but he got stuck at a certain point. He asked me for help, and I went out trying to help him out while you were snoring the day away. Tsunade punched Jureya on the top of his head. I do not snore, you are peeping nonsense. While Jureya was massaging his scalp, Tsunade asked him, so what about this technique is he having trouble with? Jureya grinned and said, oh he isn't having trouble with this, per se. It's just a matter of chakra control. He's still too young to have the control he needs to use this dot. Tsunade began to laugh loudly. Very loudly. It actually took her around 20 seconds to quiet down. Jureya didn't understand what exactly was so amusing. What's so funny? Tsunade, who had just about stopped laughing, replied, the brat has crappy chakra control. I've never heard of a Hokage wannabe who even had average chakra control. There's no way he can ever be Hokage. Naruto's head shot up, and Shizun looked reproachingly at her sensei. Tsunade saw me she began, but Naruto cut her off. Iro Senen said that no one had the chakra control needed to use this when they were my age he said monotonously. Shizun turned to look at Naruto, surprised at his tone of voice. Tsunade herself was surprised. She expected the kid to blow up and start yelling about how he was the greatest or something stupid similar to that. Heck, Naruto startled himself with his answer. 
Tsunade quickly recovered. Hey Brad, I don't know what Jureya is thinking, but Shizun here had enough chakra control to be a hospital medic nin when she was 13. Naruto flinched. Sakura had mentioned things about medic nin to him in the few conversations that she didn't do him physical harm. Did she want to be one? Medic nin were at least level ninja who had extremely high chakra control. They specialized in medicine to heal combat wounds or treat patients in a hospital. So it is possible for a ninja my level to have very high chakra control Naruto thought. The Hokages were nothing but the best, and I have a long way to go, he mused. Shizun gave Tsunade a very hard look, while Jureya inwardly was fuming at Tsunade. Shizun had high chakra control for her age, because her chakra reserves weren't anywhere near what Naruto had. Factor in the Kyuubi's chakra, and it's a miracle the kid has enough control to perform a hinge. Naruto finished his second plate and let out a satisfied sigh. He turned his head to look at Tsunade, who he noticed was smirking at him. He decided that he needed to tone her down a little. Naruto put his hands behind his head, leaned back into his chair, and put a lazy grin on his face. Well if your chakra control is so great, then why don't you become Hokage Tsunade's eyes narrowed in anger. He knew that one would tick her off. Now for the haymaker. And what do you know anyways? You're just a vain old hag who refuses to look her age. You're old enough to be a botchan. Hey you know what? That's what you are. A botchan. Tsunade no botchan. Naruto finished, with a heavy inflection at the end of his little speech, grinning victoriously. Tsunade snapped. Nobody called her old, let alone call her botchan. Realizing that she was imagining his very slow and painful death, Tsunade shook her head, got up, and pointed at the door of the restaurant. Outside. Now was all she said. Naruto recoiled. He was a dead man walking. He pushed her buttons a little bit too hard, and now he was paying the price. He tried to create a light atmosphere and get out of the whole mess. Tsunade Sama, think about this for a second, Naruto stuttered. You don't really want to kill me, you're just upset that you're so old. Tsunade's entire body tensed up. Shizun shook her head and sighed while Jureya was cracking up. The kid needed to learn to think before he talks. Without saying another word, Tsunade walked over to where Naruto was sitting, picked him up by the cuff of his orange jacket, threw him over her shoulder and walked out into the street. Naruto tried valiantly to break free and run for freedom, but it wasn't going to happen. Tsunade had a death grip on his jacket. Upon exiting the restaurant, Tsunade threw Naruto about 20 feet down the street. It was lunchtime, so the streets were alive with the children once more, and people were going about their business. It held such an air of tranquility that Naruto lost himself for a moment. It probably would have lasted longer had Tsunade not punched a crater into the ground. Tsunade slowly rose up and released a bit of her chakra to let Naruto know who was the queen bee around here. All the townspeople ran indoors, grabbing the children and ushering them inside as well. In less than a minute, the alive thriving town had disappeared. Tsunade looked at Naruto, who was angry that she had turned the street into their battlefield. They could have clearly gone to the fields where Irosenin taught him earlier. For disrupting this peaceful village and inciting a needless fear into the villagers, Tsunade was going to pay. Bachan Naruto asked. You could have beat me up outside of the town. Why did you do that? Tsunade was quickly getting tired of the way the little brat was addressing her. I couldn't wait long enough to beat your head and she replied. Ureya and Shizun came out into the street to hear that last statement. Shizun gave one last attempt to save Naruto's well-being. Tsunade Sama. Stop acting like a little child. Please stop this. Tsunade answered her by lifting up her left pinky finger and spoke to Naruto. I'm going to only use this finger to beat you down. I'm not going to need anything else. You can try whatever you want. I doubt you'll accomplish much she finished with a grin. Shizun was getting frustrated. These childish antics of her sensei were quickly growing old. Tsunade Sama please. Her words got cut off as Naruto let out a scream and charged at Tsunade. Naruto was fuming inside. She'd beat him with her left pinky finger. No one underestimated him and got away with it. He'd show her that not only would she have to use more than just one finger to beat him, she was going to lose if she tried. He threw a right hook at Tsunade's face, which she quickly dodged by squatting, and threw her left pinky at his chin, lifting him off the ground. Naruto fell on his butt and was slightly dazed from the hit. Wasting no time, Tsunade stood over him and flicked his forehead protector with her left pinky, sending him 30 feet down the street. Naruto slowly got up, dusting off some of the thicker patches of dirt that got on his jacket. Tsunade grinned and egged him on some more. I didn't think that this fight would be this easy brat. With what Jureya was saying, I expected to have to use both pinky fingers against you. I have to say I'm sorely disappointed. Naruto was incensed. A disappointment. She had some nerve to say that. If there was anything that he tried not to be, it was that. Hiro Senen was also watching this fight, and he wasn't going to let him down. Naruto formed a hand seal. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. A smoke cloud formed to Naruto's right. 
Once it cleared up, the Naruto on the left was holding a blue ball of chakra, while the Naruto on the right was disrupting the flow of the chakra in seemingly random places. Shizune's eyes widened as she finally learned what Naruto had been working on. The Yandame's Otsunade Sama, why did you not ask him what he was working on? Of course he doesn't have the control to do the elite have trouble with it. She was secretly glad that what he was learning was such a high level one, surely Tsunade Sama would recognize her errors and stop this stupid fight. Tsunade on the other hand was shocked. The kid was learning that. And not only that, what he had formed looked to be the real deal. It looked exactly as genuine dot if it weren't for the fact that she knew it was an incomplete one, she would have been a little afraid. Well, performing a jutsu is one thing, and executing it's a whole another monster. She doubted that he could hit her, even if he had managed to form a perfect one. The Naruto on the right poofed out of existence. Naruto went full speed towards Tsunade with the intention of scoring a direct hit on her body. When he got to within 5 feet of Tsunade, Naruto aimed directly at her stomach, yelling Rasengan Tsunade's side. The kid had no sense of tactics whatsoever. A direct attack with no feints. No misdirection. It was as if he believed she was going to stand still and let him hit her. You've got a long way to go Brad, if you ever want to be Hokage she mused. Tsunade stepped to the left and caught his right arm, holding it away from her. They quickly dissipated. Looking down at Naruto with a smirk, she was surprised to see him smiling. What's he smiling for? What are you so happy about, you little brat? Naruto wrenched his arm from her hand and said, you used your entire hand. Five fingers. Tsunade looked at her right hand and was surprised. She had forgotten about her little declaration after seeing the brat from real looking dot, she couldn't let him know that he won. She didn't have it in her to admit defeat. Tsunade shrugged. A, hey, I was just being nice. I could have moved farther and dodged it altogether. I just didn't want you tripping and hitting yourself with that thing. It would have been a witch to heal. Naruto nodded, secretly very pleased with himself for getting out of the fight, without suffering too much damage to his ego, and very little damage to his body. He was about to walk over to where Jiraiya and Shizun were standing when Tsune turned towards Jiraiya. Jiraiya. Are you trying to teach this kid the Rasengan, what's the point of teaching him this technique when he can't even master it? Filling his head with stupid dreams. To actually think that he'll become Hokage someday one, Naruto stopped moving. Jiraiya gave her a venomous glare. There are only so many times you can put someone down. Shizun was simply stunned that Tsunade could be so cruel. She began to walk over to Naruto to reassure him when he abruptly turned around to look at Tsunade. He gave her one of the biggest smiles he'd ever made. Okay, everyone else in history stunk it up trying to dot so what? I'm not them. I'm me. Yuzumaki Naruto. I won't know I can't do it unless I try. If I end up not being able to do it, well, I'll do what Kakashi Sensei did and make my own variation of it. But you're not stopping me from trying. No. Way. Naruto finished. Tsunade almost smiled. The kid had more confidence than anyone she had ever met. He had scored some serious points with that comeback, and it dawned on her that the brat was slowly growing on her. It was impossible for her to not like anyone who resembled Nawaki and Dan to such an extent. What can I do to help him, oh yay. I'll bet against him. Tsunade grinned. This was so foolproof that it was genius. Okay brat, you want to make a bet Tsunade asked. Naruto was a little confused, this was not what he was expecting her to say. I'll bet that you can't learn them in three months she said, holding out three fingers. Naruto's eyes narrowed. Three months. He'd been learning them for over a month already. He didn't need three months. You'll buy me all the sake I want for a month. Tsunade said, grinning. A feeling of dread came over Naruto. He didn't expect to lose the bet, but the mere idea of having to buy sake for Tsunade had him breaking out in a cold sweat. Naruto reflexively shivered. If anything, he sure as heck was going to be motivated to learn as soon as possible. He closed his eyes and put his hands behind his head and asked her a question, Oi Bachan, what do I get when I learn this? He opened his eyes to see Tsune charging at him. He couldn't process what was happening fast enough, and before he knew it, she had him in a headlock. Again with the Bachan. Tsune thought angrily. What the hell is wrong with this brat? Naruto was struggling against her for all he was worth. In other words, he got nowhere. She had him in a death grip and wasn't easing up in the least. Hearing a lecherous giggle, Tsunade turned around to see Jiraiya riding furiously with the definition of perverted smile on his face. Confused, she looked down at Naruto and realized that she was holding his head to her. Tsunade broke out in a faint blush and was in the process of letting him go when Naruto stomped on her foot as hard as he could. That did it. Any thoughts of letting him off evaporated into the hot summer day. She renewed her death grip on his head and broke out in delighted laughter when he heard his muffled screams of pain. She was a little surprised. Knowing Jiraiya, she thought the kid would be a full-blown pervert. As it was, the kid wasn't even breaking out in a nosebleed. So the kid's not a pervert, eh? Let's see how far we can take this. Giving Jiraiya a devious smile, she moved Naruto's head so that it was right in her cleavage. 
Jiraiya guffawed like a horse and proceeded to ride even faster before the stimulation was too much, and he broke out into a titanic nosebleed and passed out on the floor. Tsunade smiled. Tsunade 1, Jiraiya 0. Naruto realized that his situation had become even more dire. Instead of just having his face flattened like it was earlier, now it was being crushed from the left, right, and middle. On top of that, someone turned out the lights. It was very dark where he was. Getting a little desperate, he moved his head in what few directions he could and began to fight against her even harder when he noticed a faint glint of light. He stopped moving his head around and tried to concentrate his eyes on where it came from. He found it again and for whatever reason, couldn't stop looking at it. When Tsunade felt Naruto go still, she wondered if the kid passed out. Letting him go to check if he was still conscious, she found that he was, but he still wasn't moving. Knowing rigor mortis takes more than half a day in this heat, she pushed him hard away from her. Naruto was unprepared for the shove and almost tripped on his own feet. He managed to stay on his two feet while never taking his eyes off that glint of light, which turned out to be a green stone that she was wearing as a necklace. He had no idea why he couldn't tear his gaze from the stone and had even less of an idea why the stone had such power over him. Tsunade noticed where his eyes were staring at and groaned. Sigh, I was wrong. The brat's been corrupted by Jiraiya. He's just a lot smarter in getting what he wants. Quickly getting sick of a little brat ogling her goodies, Tsunade decided to get him to stop by embarrassing him. Hey brat she began with a seductive smile. Like what you see she gave him a wink for good measure. Naruto realizing what part of her body the stone was at, was about to sputter out an apology when he realized her game. In the past month traveling with Jureya, Naruto had observed Jureya performing research a number of times. Over time, he came to a gradual understanding of how men and women tease each other. He blew Tsunade the biggest raspberry he could and said, who'd want to stare at your old, saggy, botch and Shizun let out a gasp and put her hand over her mouth. Realizing that Naruto was about to meet Kami-sama, she offered the venerable Kami a quick prayer. Kami-sama, please protect Naruto for the next 10 seconds. He knows not the words he has just uttered and the wrath he has just unleashed. Tsunade's eyes were replaced by two blue pools of chakra, and she was radiating chakra from her body in such large amounts that Naruto briefly wondered if she had pulled a rock lee and opened a celestial gate. He didn't have to ponder for long, as Tsunade charged at him silently, her desire to kill him overpowering the immediate area. Naruto felt it, but stood strong. When she was halfway to him, he asked a question out loud. That stone, what is it? Tsunade was brought to a complete stop, her chakra and killing intent gone as soon as it erupted. Her shock was obvious in her body language, and her surprise even more so in her tone of voice. What stone are you talking about? Naruto didn't budge. That green stone that you're wearing as a necklace. Tsunade inwardly flinched. The stone was the last memoir she had of her grandfather, the Shadame Hokage of Konoha. Its monetary worth could have supported a small village for years, and the sentimental value it held to her was above priceless. She had gone to great lengths to hide it. The stone seemed perfectly complacent when she was wearing it, but the lure it held to others was great, and the last two people she let have it ended up being referred to as bodies within the year. Tsunade shrugged and dismissively said, it's nothing brat. Nothing at all. Naruto straightened out a bit and gave her a smile. He was pleased at a response. Well if it's nothing to you, Bachan, when I master them, I want that dotty pointed at the stone for emphasis. Tsunade was shivering inside. The brat had no idea what he was asking of her. She had only given the stone to the two people she loved unconditionally with all her heart. And it broke her heart each time she had to claim it again from their lifeless bodies. Outside, Tsunade was an emotionless statue. No one can do Brad. This stone's worth a small fortune. You can bet that you'll master that, the, the Shaiki Fuijin and the Horatian in three months, and I won't take it. Tsunade thought this would stop the Brad from asking again. After all, she threw three of the Yondames in there, and the kid always perked up when that man was mentioned. Naruto was musing. He had no idea what the Shaiki Fuijin or the Horatian were, but he knew this was the apex of fire. He had overheard Kakashi Sensei mentioning it to Sasuke. It created a massive flame in the shape of a dragon that seemed to have a mind of its own. The flames were several times more intense than the fireball Sasuke could already form and required a very high affinity with fire, whatever the heck that meant. In other words, he had no shot of learning that, which meant he couldn't win that stone as a prize. Given the way she mentioned all four techniques, he figured that there was nothing he could bet to learn in three months and have her accept. Naruto then suddenly perked up. Two words in that statement were the key. Three months. What if he offered to learn even just in a much shorter time span? It didn't have to be impossible by any means, he just had to make her think that it was impossible. After all, she thought three months was impossible because she dictated that term to him when she made the bet. Huh Naruto mused. When did I get so smart? Naruto began his attack to get Tsunade to agree. Oi, Bachan. Tsunade shot him a look that promised death by castration. 
I'll bet that I can learn it in one week, if you bet that necklace. Also, if you bet it and I lose, I'll buy you twice the sake for twice as long. Tsunade couldn't stop the surprise from showing up on her face. One week. Given where he was at the moment, mastering them in a week was impossible. You can't just suddenly wake up one day and control chakra. She knew. She tried. Really hard, in fact. It hurt her a lot when she failed. She still winced when she recalled trying to hold 100 leaves to her body while running up and down a tree that she had doused in water. Oh, she also tried to do it blindfolded, being told from Jurea that practicing tree climbing while being blindfolded greatly improves your control. What happened that day was that she lost half the leaves before she even got to the tree, and she couldn't sense where the tree was. She ran face first into the tree, ruining her clothes and cutting up her face. In the end, the lesson learned was that chakra control is something gained over a long period of time. Not one week. It was impossible for him to master it in a week. It wasn't even her opinion, it was just a fact. But that knowledge in mind, Sunade agreed to the bet. What she didn't realize was that she was subconsciously throwing her heart out there one last time. Okay Naruto. If you learn this in one week, I'll give you my grandfather's necklace. It was her grandfather's. Oh well. Naruto didn't really care at the moment as he jumped for joy. He had convinced Sune to bet on the necklace. Still, one week was a pretty harsh deadline. He looked at Jureya and said, I'm going to go practice with it. I only have one week. That's not a lot of time. Jureya had just woken up from his stupor and caught the last bits of the conversation. He didn't know what Sune had bet, but he didn't really care. He nodded, and Naruto broke out into a full-blown sprint towards where he had practiced earlier in the day. Jureya decided that the kid was probably better off trying to figure out chakra control on his own, and went back into the restaurant. After all, he still had to finish writing what he started. Tsunade saw this, and proceeded to follow Jureya. Shizun looked at Naruto quickly disappearing into the fields, and at the two making their way into the restaurant to get drunk. As Tsunade walked back into the restaurant, the village came back to life. Shizun then wondered what she was going to do. She did know that the last thing she wanted to do was follow Tsunade back into the restaurant. Being with Tsunade does things to you, and getting sick of the smell of sake is one of them. Deciding that she wouldn't be able to tolerate the smell of sake so early in the day, she dropped Tantan off with Tsunade and began running towards Naruto. Looking back to see Shizun running to Naruto, Tsunade chuckled. Help him all you want, Shizun. I'm going to enjoy my sake. Shizun-chan, do you know what I'm doing wrong Naruto asked, frustrated out of his mind. He'd been practicing for over an hour and didn't feel like he had made any progress. Shizun pondered her answer. She knew that he really wasn't doing anything wrong. It was just that his chakra control was woefully inept to hold what he could already form in place. I don't think you're doing anything wrong, Naruto-kun Shizun began. I just think it's, as Tsunade Sama said, your lack of chakra control. You're having trouble keeping the second step of staying in a perfect sphere. Because of that, any thin layer of chakra you produce to perfect the third step and master is instantly broken. Naruto sighed. It truly was incredibly difficult dot to even do the first step, a ninja had to have sufficient chakra control to swirl around an amount of chakra in enough different directions. While maintaining a spherical shape. Many people can't even do that, as they either don't have the chakra control or the chakra capacity to practice it enough to get it down. If you get past the first step, you then have to pump a lot of chakra into it for power, making control and capacity an even bigger issue. While maintaining a spherical shape. Then the last step was to create a thin layer of chakra that held the entire thing together, keeping the power inside. The spherical shape is emphasized in the final step more than ever, as even a small mistake in the shape at some point would burst a layer of chakra holding the swirling chakra together. Naruto's demeanor instantly became bright when he went over everything that made it so difficult to learn. He knew that when he mastered it, he'd have at least level chakra control, if not more, and that he'd have something really powerful in his arsenal. That said, he again reached an impasse in his training, but this time, Iro Senen wasn't around to help him out. Shizun was, though, and from what he remembered, she was a prodigy at chakra control. He figured that she might be able to point something out to him that might help him out. And even if she didn't, he liked talking to her. Shizun Chan. What should I do differently to learn this, I don't think I'm going to learn it by doing what I did for the past hour for another week. Naruto asked her. Shizun for her part had already been mulling over what Naruto could do for the past 20 minutes, and she had come up with a pretty good solution, if she did say so herself. Naruto-kun, why don't you try to form a smaller one first Shizun asked him. Naruto asked her a question. He had no idea where she was going with this. Shizun smiled at his confusion and began to clarify things for him. See, it's like this Naruto-kun. When you're a baby, do you instantly learn how to run? Naruto shook his head. Of course not. Babies can't run. They can't even walk. They first learn how to crawl. Then walk. Then oh. Shizun continued on, though she saw the light dawn on his eyes. 
No, they don't. They first learn how to crawl. Then when they master crawling, they learn how to walk. Once they master how to walk, then they begin to learn how to run. So what I'm suggesting is for you to create a smaller first. If you can do that, then gradually put more and more chakra into it until you can create a normal sized, mastering the dot Shizun finished on a high note. Naruto came to that conclusion before she finished, and he had already tried to create a smaller one than before. To his horror, he found that this was proving to be even more difficult for him than the normal sized one. Naruto was quickly becoming frantic. The prospect of wasting all that money on Tsunade's sake was quickly becoming a reality, and he was scared for Gama-chan's well-being. Shizun-chan, I'm having even more trouble with the smaller one. What's going on Naruto finished, unable to stand still. Shizun was stumped. They ate quite a bit of chakra. There was no reason for him to have even more trouble with a smaller one than he did with a normal-sized one. When Naruto began nagging at her again, Shizun became a little frustrated herself and snapped back at Naruto, then try making a really big one and work your way down. It wasn't in a harsh tone, but that was the first time she had ever raised her voice at Naruto. She immediately regretted doing so and tried to apologize to him, who had turned his back on her. She slowly began to walk over to him, saying, I'm sorry Naruto-kun. I didn't mean to snap back at you. It's just that, well, I really want you to learn this and prove Tsunade Sama wrong she finished in a determined tone. Naruto's answer was to summon a cage bunshin and create something far bigger than what he had been creating before. Shizun was in awe at the sheer amount of chakra Naruto seemed to have. Her awe quickly turned to joy as she noticed that this was far more spherical than what he had produced before, and the shape seemed to be much more stable. When Naruto finally performed the third step on it, he had managed to keep the shape for a whole three seconds before it destabilized and died out. The cage bunshin poofed out of existence, leaving an exhausted Naruto panting for breath. He had put quite a bit of chakra in that, but it wasn't any more than what he needed to create 50 cage bunshin, which he normally can do without even breaking a sweat. What tired him out was the amount of concentrating he had to do to keep them together. It took a lot out of him, and his head was hurting from concentrating too hard. Mistaking his panting as chakra exhaustion, Shizun quickly rushed over to Naruto. Naruto-kun, are you okay? Are you feeling chakra exhaustion? She was very concerned for his health, as chakra exhaustion could knock people out for weeks and made no attempt to keep the worry out of her voice. Naruto turned around to see Shizun's face, making a worried look on his behalf. He was touched that she was worrying about him so much. He didn't want her to worry, but to have someone concern themselves with your well-being was truly a pleasant feeling. His mental exhaustion more or less gone, he jumped up and started skipping around her with a huge smile on his face, yelling at each time he landed. Shizun was startled when he shot up, but quickly relaxed when she saw that it wasn't chakra exhaustion. She couldn't keep a smile out of her face after seeing how happy he was. Naruto then yelled to her, Shizun-chan you were right. I just have to create something huge and work my way down to a normal one. You were right, you were right, you were right Naruto exclaimed as he began to skip around her even faster. He didn't keep that up for long, however, as he landed after one particular skip, he shot towards Shizun and enveloped her in a bear hug. Shizun jumped a little in surprise. Naruto was short for his age, so he only came up to her shoulders. Her thoughts quickly faded from how tall he was to how much she was enjoying the hug. It had been over 14 years since her uncle last hugged her. Tsunade wasn't much for physical contact outside of causing bodily harm to others. Traveling around with Tsunade meant that she couldn't date. In other words, human contact was a very scarce thing in her life, let alone a hug with as much contact as the one Naruto was currently giving her. She could feel the strength of his body through how strong the hug was. But most importantly, she felt his warmth. The body heat of another person. It was such a warm and pleasant feeling. Wanting more contact and to applaud his progress, Shizun gave him a little hug back. Naruto felt her hug him back and it triggered a feeling that he never felt before. He just knew that from this point on, he would always do his best to make Shizun happy. That smile she made when he was skipping around her was something he wanted to put on her face every second she was around him. That smile is full of mirth and affection, without any trace of deception. Letting her go, Naruto grinned sheepishly at Shizun. Sorry about that Shizun-chan he said as he rubbed the back of his head with his hand. Shizun smiled back in response and let him know she didn't mind. It's alright Naruto-kun, it's not like I was offended or anything by it. In fact, I got the feeling that you really liked hugging me, with how strong your hug was and all she finished, teasing him. Naruto blushed and turned his face away from her to hide his embarrassment. Shizun then decided to probe. So Naruto-kun, did you like hugging me Naruto, still looking away, tentatively nodded. Shizun mentally grinned. So he liked it too huh? I'm glad. Well I'll tell you what. If you master this in a week, I'll give you a hug, Naruto-kun. How's that sound? Naruto's face broke into a huge smile. You really mean that Shizun-chan he asked of her. He looked like he was having trouble staying still long enough for her answer. 
He probably wants to jump around again. Shizun thought, laughing at the mental image. When she nodded, Naruto did a single jump while yelling woohoo in celebration before landing and quickly running away from her. When she asked him what he was doing, he looked back at her and yelled, I need to master it faster than ever now. I'm going to train all day and all night. Just you wait Shizun-chan. I'll have it mastered before the weekends. You can count on it. Shizun chuckled before she walked over to under a tree to watch him practice. She was still in awe at his seemingly limitless stamina. How he could produce after that big and practice control was beyond her. It broke the rules of chakra and nature as she knew it. Then she looked at his eyes, full of determination and vigor. She thought that his eyes were quite comely with that glint. Shaking her head, she proceeded to stop that train of thought. As time went on, Naruto was training every bit as hard as when he began, if not harder. Shizun began to notice the muscle definition on his arms, and the few times he failed to keep them under control, the following explosion kicked up a sizable gust of wind, revealing his stomach for seconds at a time. From the few times she saw it, she noticed that it had quite a bit of definition for a 12-year-old. However, each time she thought that, she looked at her face, and reminded herself that he was only 12. His face still had a bit of baby fat left, and it added to his childish personality. As Naruto finished his second hour of training, Shizun began to doze off. It amused her that he seemed to show no signs of fatigue after two strenuous hours of training, where she was struggling to stay awake from just watching him. Her eyelids were slowly becoming heavier and heavier, as sleep threatened to overcome her. Before she did give in, she thought of Naruto in a couple years, without the baby fat, and much taller than he is now. The picture of him in her mind was a very attractive young man who had her in a very warm hug. He was taller than she was by a head, now she was the one resting her head on his shoulder during the hug. Her imaginary Naruto had a very toned body, and he somehow instantly lost his shirt during the hug. She broke the hug and stared. And stared. Performing the first lecherous smile of her life, Shizun drifted off into sleep, fantasizing about a future Naruto that would hold her as warmly as she would hold him. Shizun-chan, wake up. Shizun-chan. Shizun groggily woke up. Wiping her eyes with her hands, she opened them to see Naruto's face right in front of her. She jumped back a little in surprise, hitting the tree she slept on with her head. As Shizun yelped in pain and massaged the sore spot on her head, Naruto laughed and sat down next to her. She felt his body heat radiating from him and noticed a subtle desire to get closer. Seeing no reason not to, she moved to him until his arm was touching hers. To her delight, Naruto didn't flinch or move away from her. If anything, he relaxed into her arm, giving her a warm feeling inside. When Naruto let out a yawn, she was surprised that he tired himself out. Then she took a look at her surroundings. The sun was setting in the horizon, over a distant mountain that she couldn't remember the name of. She surmised that he trained for roughly 7 to 8 hours straight, which was, for lack of a better word, insane. She was surprised at how much stamina Naruto really seemed to have. Then again, she shouldn't have been surprised. She was beginning to realize that Naruto was a surprising person. He had surprised her with his spontaneous hug, and he surprised her again with how long he trained. Was it for the necklace or the hug, Naruto-kun she wondered. Suddenly feeling a weight on her shoulder, Shizun turned around to see Naruto's head on it. He had fallen asleep on her shoulder. He's probably exhausted from training so hard for so long Shizun thought. She looked at Naruto's face. He had his mouth closed in a serene smile, and he was breathing softly. He took off the aid at some point during his training, as it was in his hand. It revealed his entire face to her. She loved how his whiskers seemed to wiggle each time he took a breath. She carefully moved her other arm to touch one, upon which he grimaced, made a face, and went back to sleeping normally. She thought that was the cutest thing she ever saw, and found it very difficult to resist the impulse to do it again. Looking at the sun setting in the distance, she realized she had found a moment of peace in her otherwise busy, wandering life. She closed her eyes and took a deep breath, reveling in the moment, and doing her best to fixate it permanently into her memory. After she believed she had done so, she looked at Naruto again, and realized that she too was still quite tired. Making herself comfortable as best she can without bothering Naruto, Shizun put her head on his and began to doze off, the two of them keeping each other warm with their respective body heats. She figured his body heat would keep her warm enough to stay out here for a couple hours before they had to go back to town to rest up for tomorrow. Shizun perked up at that thought. Tomorrow. Tomorrow would be the day Orochimaru asked Tsunade Sama to give her a decision on whether she would heal his arms or not. She was worried only for a second though, as she knew Tsunade Sama would refuse Orochimaru's request. And, then what? She thought. Would Tsunade Sama go back to Konoha? Probably not. She'd just continue to wander aimlessly throughout the continent, and Jurei Sama and Naruto kun would go back to Konoha. Her heart ached at the latter. She would continue to follow Tsunade Sama, and Naruto kun would go back to Konoha. 
This was really the last time that she had to be with him. Linking back a few tears, she decided that all she could do was enjoy the time she had left with him, and proceeded to rest her head on Naruto's again. She decided that it was awfully comfortable, far more than a pillow was. I wonder if they sell Naruto kun pillows at Kanoha she thought to herself, giggling at the thought. She got all the laughs she could, because she was sure there weren't going to be many tomorrow. On a wide field, green as far as the eyes can see, two men stood facing two women. Only 30 feet separated the two groups. The sun stood high over them all, bearing witness to the meeting. So do you have the bodies ready, Tsunade Orochimaru asked. Tsunade in response pulled out a scroll and performed a hand sign. A small cloud of smoke appeared and two bodies fell onto the ground. Shizune gasped in utter horror. The drunks from two days ago. Coo coo coo, I knew you would do it, I knew it Orochimaru exclaimed, extremely pleased that he read her correctly. Let us conduct the exchange like we would prisoners. Tsunade. Bring the bodies halfway. I will then bring the Waki and Dan back, and you will heal my arms. Is this to your satisfaction? Tsunade in response picked up the bodies and proceeded to head over there. Shizune was stunned. This wasn't happening. Tsunade sama, how could you? You said you weren't going to do this. Even if he brings them back, it won't be them. It won't be Tsunade sama. Please don't do this. You'll regret this for the rest of your life if you do. Please don't do this Tsunade Sama Shizune yelled with tears beginning to form in her eyes. Tsunade did not respond to Shizune's cries. She just carried the bodies to the halfway point, dropped them, and walked back to Shizune without uttering a single word. Shizune was on her knees crying silently by the time Tsunade made it back. Her mind was refusing to accept what was going on. Tsunade looked at Shizune, who looked back at her pleadingly. Tsunade's facial expression remained impassive as she turned to Orochimaru and uttered her first words. Get on with it she said tersely. Orochimaru's grin got even wider. Tsunade Haim you're fighting with yourself inside aren't you? Tsunade's eyes narrowed in response. Ku 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 do not worry. You are making the right decision. I knew you would Orochimaru said as he and Kabuto began to walk to the two laid out bodies. Tsunade's face went back to the impassive expression she had at the beginning. Shizune realized that Orochimaru was walking over to the bodies and prepared her to kill him. She lined up her first shot and proceeded to fire when Tsunade stepped in front of her. Shizune, from the shock more than anything else, stopped her shot. Tsunade looked over her shoulder at Shizune and said quietly, I want to see them. That was it. Shizune couldn't take it anymore. No longer having the strength to hold her tears back, she began weeping uncontrollably. She bent down even further, covering her face with her hands, refusing to accept what was going to happen. Orochimaru stood directly in front of the bodies, and Kabuto, using Orochimaru's chakra, began to perform the required task to bring back Nawaki and Dan. When he completed the last hand sign, he yelled Ito Tensei. And put his hand on the ground. Nothing happened. A quick breeze went by as Tsunade allowed herself a small smile. The corpses exploded. The wind was taking its time to clear the smoke. Or Orochimaru was trying to keep himself hidden. Either way, Tsunade was getting bored and wanted this sped up. She was mentally going through Rachimaru's repertoire when she heard a faint laughter behind her. Remembering that she wasn't alone, she turned back to gaze upon Shizune's stupefied facial expression. Shizune looked like she had just seen a Shinigami offer her candy. Remember kids. Never take candy from strangers. Though it is said that strangers have the best candy, Tsunade chuckled at her apprentice best friend's expression. Cool, huh? Shizune looked up at Tsunade, beaming. Tsunade-sama, what was that? Tsunade chuckled. The was air ank, but only because it needed so much chakra, and it was a little volatile. Bunshin Daibakuha no dot exploding shadow clone. Shaking her head, Shizun got up to stand beside her master, teacher, and lifelong friend, Orochimaru slithered out of the smoke, his clothing torn in various places. Tsunade smirked as she got a good look at his face. She couldn't remember the last time Orochimaru showed such a vivid facial expression. He was seething in anger. She was seething in mirth. Tsunade Haim. I was serious about having my arms healed. I never threatened you or anyone close to you to have it done. I did nothing that would have given you cause to deny my request. I was, as you put it during our years in Kanoha, honest and loyal. The one with the history you have, who praised those who were honest and loyal, those who never told a lie, those who never turned on a comrade for this to happen from you of all people. Arachimaru paused and took a deep breath. Tsunade was unnerved. Arachimaru was never this emotional. Something was wrong. Recollecting himself, the snake chuckled. He looked at the sky, then the fields around him, then at Tsunade. He gave her a small smile that reminded her of years long past, when she was a squeaky little fangirl of the genius of her class. That smile quickly turned into a vicious snarl as Orochimaru let loose his desire to kill. Tsunade and Shizun were not ready for the sudden change in his demeanor and flinched, momentarily caught off guard. Realizing this, Orochimaru seized his advantage and prepared to make the first strike. 
As he charged at her, he got the final word in, laughing while doing so. What utter hypocrisy, you self-serving whore. The Budo blinked. It was time. The words had shocked Sunate into a momentary standstill, very similar to how she reacts to blood. Arachimaru drew Kusanagi from wherever he kept it and lunged for Tsunade's heart. When he was within 10 steps of her, she looked at his face, her eyes on his. Arachimaru broke out into a bigger smile, while Tsunade simply looked back at the ground. Five steps from her, Arachimaru inwardly chuckled at how easy this was. Four steps from her, he wondered if she had set up another trap. Three steps from her, he decided she hadn't. Kabuto wasn't moving. Two steps from her, he briefly sensed someone move from Tsunade's right, but he disregarded it as irrelevant. His eyes were entirely focused on Tsunade's beautiful face, and the blood that would spurt from it, not even 10 seconds from now. He thought of his teammate Jiraiya, and how the buffoon would attempt revenge not because he killed Tsunade, but because he killed Tsunade. Such an idiot. One step from her, he noticed that she closed her eyes. She knew she was going to die. She had resigned herself to it. There was nothing she could do. Arachimaru felt a level of ecstasy higher than what he felt after watching Siratobi die. This time he was going to deliver the killing blow and watch the life ebb out of her eyes. Standing right in front of her, Arachimaru leveled his head with hers and proceeded to decapitate her. He'd leave the hand intact for Jiraiya's sake. Maybe the idiot wouldn't be as inspired in his revenge. Or he might not even try to avenge her if he has her hand Arachimaru jokingly thought. Finishing the backswing, Arachimaru went for the kill. He closed his eyes, wanting to experience her skin give way to his blade and the sound of her head falling on the ground to the fullest. After all, it said that closing your eyes improves the other senses. So it was a slight shock to him that he felt nothing. Opening his eyes, he saw his blade centimeters from Tsunade's neck. Angry, he tried to just kill her, his senses be damned. But his body would not move. Arachimaru stopped his attempts to kill Tsunade briefly to test something. He willed his body to move, and it did not. Where other men might have freaked or lost their cool, Arachimaru did not. He was a genius after all. He quickly went through what could have triggered this paralysis. That is the most probable to have caused this. And yet Arachimaru mentally shook his head. No, I would have seen it coming, and if not, I would have felt the chakra release at the very least. The next highest possibility is poison. Arachimaru looked down as far as his eyes would allow and saw many sticking out from his arms, just below the shoulder. He couldn't remember the love of Kami-sama when he was hit or even what hit him. As he went through his memories, a young woman in a black kimono stepped into his line of sight. Arachimaru snarled. He could still make facial expressions. So it was Tsunade's little witch that did this to me. Harachimaru chuckled. The wench's chakra levels are so pathetically small that I couldn't even detect her moving. Still. He had to give her credit. She won this round. Harachimaru sighed. Tsunade's death, it would seem, would have to wait just a bit longer. Shizun glared back at the snake dot inwardly, she was breathing a huge sigh of relief. She had made it just in time. She was also pleased with herself. Not many people can subdue Arachimaru. Shizun saw Arachimaru trying to move his body to no avail. She smirked. His frustration brought her joy. Her master's pain brought her anger. Something was amiss. Shizun looked for signs of poisoning on Tsunade's body. To her frustration, she found nothing. As Shizun mulled over what else could have affected her master, Achu Kabuto sneezed. Oh crap, the sneeze forces the body to close the eyes. When Kabuto did so, his concentration broke while he was performing. He could recover with hardly any effort, but someone with high chakra control would know what was going on. He hoped the girl traveling with Tsunade was not highly talented. Dot. He looked at her to see if she had noticed. Upon doing so, Kabuto was surprised. The girl, no, woman, was much more pleasing to his eyes than what he remembered. It had to be the slight look of desperation on her face. But yes, she was quite the looker. He gave her entire body a quick glance. He unconsciously licked his lips. What he saw pleased him. Shizun's head turned quickly as she detected a faint pulse of chakra. The chakra was thin, so thin that she wouldn't have found it even if she were looking for it. But she knew where it was, and its path was obvious. She traced it back to her master to discover the traces of a dot the chakra signature was synonymous with, Shizun blinked. In Jutsu, her master was caught in a dot Shizun is mentally facetimed. That explained everything. Arachimaru's words, while harsh and completely untrue, should not have had the effect that they did. She proceeded to release Tsunade when Arachimaru called out to her. You witch. What did you do to me? How did you hit me without me noticing? Shizun replied with a smile. Brilliant as he was, Arachimaru was, for lack of a better word, an idiot in everything outside ninjutsu. However, she figured he would have a better knowledge of the human anatomy, the man was trying to become immortal. I threw my right below your shoulders, on the lowest part of the deltoid muscle. You didn't feel the attack, because that section of your arm was sealed off by Sandame Sama, and the nerve cells were dead. 
However, blood still flows to the arm, and the poison on the tips quickly spreads throughout your body, paralyzing you almost instantaneously Shizun finished with a flourish. Orochimaru smiled. He had already discovered much about this poison. It is more for capturing purposes, as it did not paralyze his vital organs. It basically restricted all dimensions of motion, nothing else. Orochimaru blinked. There was no way the girl overlooked this. He tried to mold chakra. He found that he could. Orochimaru chuckled. The poison didn't paralyze the chakra system, a basic necessity of all poisons. Foolish girl, Shizun felt a shiver course through her. What do you have to laugh about she asked Orochimaru. Orochimaru had already set up his escape and was going to, but then the girl opened her mouth. He decided to humor her. Well, Shizun-chan Shizun flinched. You're not really trying to capture me are you? Shizun recoiled as she knew he had seen through her poison. Before she could react, Orochimaru melted into a puddle of mud. Shizun knew her advantage was gone. She turned to look at Tsunade. Tsunade still stared blankly where Orochimaru stood. Shizun jumped back, put a hand on the back of Tsunade's head, and yelled, Kai. The Buto sighed. The game was up. However, he found himself pleased that she had discovered his error. This proved her to be intelligent and not a stupid ditz or even worse, Kabuto gulped, a fangirl. He cancelled his and proceeded to make his way to his master. While doing so, Kabuto noticed his hands were trembling. He smiled. He would not be made to wait much longer to have his hands on her body. Life came back to Tsunade's eyes as she looked around for who just yelled. Tsunade was only looking right in front of her and it didn't dawn on her to look behind her. Shizun laughed at her master's confusion and softly tapped her shoulder to let her know who it was. Tsunade flinched and did a quick 180, ready to strike, when she noticed it was Shizun. Shizun chuckled as she softly said, welcome back, Tsunade sama Tsunade relaxed a little, but was still confused. There were some gaps in her memory that she couldn't account for. In fact, she couldn't recall anything after Orochimaru charged at her. She tensed up. Orochimaru. Where is that snake? Shizun, noticing Tsunade's tension, quickly let her know what happened to her. It was Tsunade sama I, the ground exploded from beneath them as Orochimaru shot out of the earth like a missile and stabbed Tsunade in the shoulder. He proceeded to cut his way through her body when Tsunade jumped backwards, freeing herself. Shizun watched the entire exchange in shock. The exchange occurred too quickly, and she had completely forgotten about Orochimaru after Tsunade was released from the dot age and in level mistake to forget about your opponent in the midst of a fight, but Shizun was more of a healer and had very little frontline combat experience. Tsunade wrapped Shizun with her right arm and jumped back several times. After putting a good 50 meters between herself and Orochimaru, she chanced to glance back. Orochimaru wasn't even looking at her, he was looking the other way. She realized that he was looking at his underling, the glasses kid, running towards him. Good. This'll give me enough time to heal and plan something out. Tsunade knew that the wound would require quite a bit of chakra to heal. She figured that she would need everything she had against Orochimaru, and Shizun wasn't much of a melee fighter. The match made in heaven. Shizun, heal my shoulder for me Tsunade ordered. Her mind back together, Shizun quickly did as ordered and performed on her master's shoulder. The wound was quickly closing. Shizun noticed with a sigh that Tsunade would not look at the blood flowing out of her shoulder. Tsunade wasn't looking elsewhere for that reason, however. She just saw the glasses kid meet up with Orochimaru and prepare a chakra scalpel. That was a good and bad thing. It meant the kid was a medic, so he had high chakra control and a high understanding of the vital points of the human body. It also meant that Shizun would be a match for him. She saw the kid perform what was most likely an anti-toxin dot she saw to her regret Orochimaru breaking free of his paralysis. He must have attacked her with another stupid mud clone. The buto was done in no time. The poison, while potent, was far from lethal and far too slow acting. Shizun finished healing Tsunade's shoulder as Orochimaru readied Kusanagi once more and charged at them. Kabuto followed closely behind, chakra scalpel at the ready. Standing up, Tsunade removed her green jacket and threw it over her shoulder. The jacket floated harmlessly onto the ground. As it landed, the sleeves crossed over the middle, covering up the sucker on the back. Drawing a large amount of chakra to her right hand, she got into a defensive stance and addressed her student. Shizun. Take the four eyes. I have a snake to hunt. Sunlight fell on Naruto's eyes, waking him from his peaceful sleep. Groaning, he pulled himself into an upright position to find himself on a bed. He did not remember falling asleep on a bed, let alone getting back to the inn. The last thing he remembered was making a huge breakthrough in the dot he couldn't duplicate, the Iro Senen could make, and he still needed a cage bunshin to create it, but he had managed to create something that was definitely battle ready and was easy to make. But for the life of him he could not remember how he got back to the inn. Curiosity soon turned into frustration. Naruto began stomping the ground before sitting Indian style on the bed in the classic thinking pose before headbutting the wall. 
When these three failed, he tried to fit his hand into his mouth because Sasuke told him doing so would greatly increase his intelligence and memory. Naruto found that his hand was a lot bigger than his mouth. Try as he might, the accursed hand would not fit in his supposedly big mouth. The Sasuke Fangirl Association, SFA for short, had told him many times to shut his big mouth. So if his mouth was big, why wouldn't his hand fit? Or was it that he was doomed to be dumb forever? Or, Naruto decided, it was just that he had really big hands. Sasuke could probably do it because his hands were so puny. Haha, <laughs> Naruto couldn't hold back a grin. He remembered what Iro Senen said hand size being proportional to a certain other part of a male body. However, this meant that guys with big you know, are, well, stupid. Set to prove this wrong, Naruto became more determined than ever to fit his hand into his mouth. Before his face became a visage of pain. His jaw was cramped. Howling in pain, Naruto began jumping around the room again furiously trying to knock his jaw back into place, his attempts at improving his cranial abilities forgotten. Tightly shutting his eyes in an attempt to reduce the pain, Naruto lost sight of where he was jumping around. He knocked over a lamp that got tangled up in the curtains, consequently getting redirected and landing viciously on a small round dining table, before rolling off it and landing with a loud thud in front of a chair, which triggered a loud squeal sound. Now everything made sense except for the squeal. Naruto finally got his face back together and looked for what made the abnormal sound. He laid down on the ground to see what was under the chair when Tauntin came running out from under it. Getting up into a sitting position, Naruto picked up Tauntin and put her on his lap before beginning to wonder how Tauntin got here. This one wasn't as hard to figure out as how he got here. It was either Bachan or Shizun Chan, and he was around only one of them before mysteriously finding himself here. Shizun. Shizun had probably carried him back to his room. Naruto felt a warmth spread throughout his body from his chest after visualizing Shizun carrying him from the training field to the inn, taking him up to his room and tucking him in for the night. Then his thoughts strayed to what happened yesterday. He smiled as he remembered the afternoon he shared with her. She had helped him enormously by teaching him the basic theories of chakra control and provided moral support by simply being there. She was also the one who provided him with the brilliant idea of learning how to make a large and working his way down. No doubt about it, Shizun was a genius. I mean who else would have thought of that? Then he remembered the hug he gave her as thanks for everything she did and how she hugged him back. He leaned back, closed his eyes, and smiled. That memory was definitely one he'd keep for all time. He remembered how warm the hug was, and how he just felt so safe with her, and how even with all the crap that was going on in his life, for that one moment, he forgot all of it and focused only on her. He remembered hugging her tighter and tighter because he wanted to do more to really show her how thankful he was. Looking up at the clock, Naruto saw that it was getting to be late in the morning. He sighed out in displeasure, he would have enjoyed reliving that memory for a couple more minutes. At the very least. Cradling taunt and exactly like he remembered Shizun doing so, Naruto proceeded to leave his room. When he got to the door, he took a look back. The room looked like a S-rank was used on it. The curtains were torn up, the bed sheets were on the ground, both lamps in the room were broken, and the lampshade on one of them looked like it went through hell and back. Naruto sighed as he fished around in his pocket for Gamachan. He'd have to leave a sizable tip to please the maids to clean this one up. Entering the lobby, Naruto was immediately called for by Jiraiya, who was enjoying a cup of tea at a table. Naruto began to walk over to him when he noticed the table was empty except for that cup of tea. This made Naruto frown. And angry. That Iro Senen better have some ramen. Arriving at the table, Naruto sat Tauntin down on the ground. Naruto noticed that Iro Senen had remembered to get Tauntin's breakfast, as there was a bowl of pig feed or whatever it is pigs eat for breakfast on the ground. This further angered the young blonde Jinchuriki, and he let the idiot Iro Senen know it. Oi, Iro Senen. You remember to get breakfast for Bachan's pig, but you forget me Naruto not so quietly asked the Toad Senen. Honestly, come on. What the hell. Jiraiya didn't miss a beat. To be honest, he was sort of disappointed in Naruto. Naruto. Smell the table. Naruto was confused but decided to humor his hero Senen, and so he did. He could smell Maizo Raymon, but when he looked at the table, it wasn't there. Realizing this was a test, Naruto put his hands together and said, Kai the shrouded Maizo Raymon was dissipated, and Naruto happily dug in. Jiraiya wanted a lesson learned out of all this and knew the best way to teach it. Naruto. Next time I do this, I expect you to recognize that and remove it without my prompting for you to do so. If you don't, I'll eat your Maizo Raymon in front of you. Understand. Naruto hurriedly nodded, which was a mistake to do with all the food in his mouth. He began choking, eliciting laughs from Jiraiya, who hit Naruto in the back a couple of times. Three minutes passed by with Naruto indulging himself and Jiraiya growing impatient at Tsunade's tardiness. Ugh, although Tsunade was never a morning person, for her to be this late is something else. Especially with Shizun rooming with her. Where is that no good blonde haired crappy gambler Jiraiya asked Naruto. 
Naruto was confused. How should I know he just finished his ramen and was in good spirits, only to have Hirosen and bring him down again. Uraya sighed and leaned back in his chair, deciding that there was nothing he could do but wait. He didn't have to wait 10 seconds before a man walked over to them asking a question. Excuse me sir. Are you looking for two women, one of them a blonde with long hair and the other a girl with short black hair? Both Uraya and Naruto turned to look at the source of the voice. The innkeeper had walked by them and overheard their conversation. Uraya nodded, though something bothered him. They were waiting for Tsunade and Shizune, not looking for them. They were looking for them a week ago. As it was, the innkeeper seemed to have some idea of where they were, if they went somewhere. And Jureya knew from years of experience not to fret about something that may or may not be a problem. Yes, we are. Do you know where they went? The innkeeper nodded. He wouldn't have remembered at all if what the blonde said wasn't so odd. She said something about talking to a snake. Jureya paled. Arachimaru could not contain his mirth and laughed merrily each time he cut into Tsunade's body. Coo coo coo, Tsunade Heim. It would seem age has begun to slow you down he taunted as he slashed at her neck. Tsunade ducked to avoid the attack, but she ducked with too much power and could not change her momentum quickly enough to jump out of the way as Arachimaru lazily swung his neck around and slashed her calf muscles. Grimacing in pain, the slug princess quickly healed herself before jumping backwards into the air and performing hand signs for a dot however, she was interrupted by Shizune's body as Kabuto threw Shizune into her. Both women fell into a heap on the ground. Tsunade recovered quickly and saw Arachimaru smiling down at her. She then looked at Shizune. Tsunade couldn't keep the anger out of her face, delighting Orochimaru. Her student's face was cut in several places, and her clothing was cut up. Tsunade's eyes narrowed. The glasses freak was obviously toying with Shizune. Tsunade next looked up at Kabuto. He had fallen in line behind Orochimaru with nary a scratch on him. Both the snake and his apprentice were slowly walking towards her, each one sporting a mocking smile. For the first time in a long time, Tsunade felt fear. Not for herself, but for her students. Her student was tired, severely wounded, and had become a liability in the fighting. Not only that, her student was outclassed. Heavily. She was losing to Orochimaru one-on-one. -on -one. Now it was two-on-one, -on -one, and she also had to make sure Shizune was alright. What to do? Naruto, how much farther do we need to go? Asked a desperate Toad Senen. Not much farther now, Hiro Senen. We just need to get out of this forest, and we'll see them replied an equally desperate blonde brat. Both shinobi were terrified at the thought of the two women going up against Orochimaru. Jiraiya knew Orochimaru could handle Tsunade and Shizune easily on his own. As it was, the time for laziness and jokes was gone. The innkeeper had said Tsunade and Shizune had gone to the fields to the east. Naruto said that the fields were where he trained last night and that he knew how to get there. What bothered Jiraiya was that Naruto said it took him a little over an hour to get there and if they got to the fields in an hour, Tsunade and Shizune were dead. Or worse. Jiraiya heard a branch snap behind him. He looked back to see Naruto falling back farther and farther. He smiled. He had set a brisk pace from the start, even for a ninja. Then about every minute or so, he increased his speed by a set amount. Naruto managed to keep up with him for the first four minutes, which put his maximum speed at mid to high level, very impressive for a genin who hadn't even reached one year of service yet. However, the upcoming battle was not going to be level. It wasn't even level. Normally Jiraiya would have kept anyone below from coming with him to face Orochimaru, but Naruto was a wild card with the Kaiubi inside of him, and he knew he would have accomplished more arguing with a tree than arguing with Naruto about staying behind. Still, whatever Naruto might accomplish in the next hour would be greatly reduced if the brat was exhausted by the time they got there. And they needed to not be there soon, but be there now. Naruto Jiraiya exclaimed. The panting Naruto managed to reply back, what do you want Senen? Jiraiya frowned. This would not do. Jiraiya came to a stop on a particularly large branch. Naruto caught up about 10 seconds after, and immediately after doing so, put both hands on his knees and bent down, struggling to catch his breath. Naruto Jiraiya began. Don't take this as an insult, but we're moving too slowly. Naruto looked up incredulously. No way they were moving too slowly. He was going all out to get to Bachan and Shizun-chan as fast as he could. Then, when what passed as deductive reasoning abilities began to start in Naruto's head, he realized the Iro Senen was right. Iro Senen wasn't tired at all. Here he was out of breath and bent over, while the Iro Senen looked like he had just taken a light stroll around the park. Naruto was willing to admit it to himself, but to admit it to Iro Senen was a very difficult pill to swallow. However, his desire to reach Shizun Chan beat down his pride. Okay, Iro Senen, we're moving too slowly, Naruto said without panting, having caught his breath. What can we do about it though? I can't move faster than that, and that tires me out too much. I'd be useless when we do get to Shizun Chan. Gureya stared at Naruto. No way did the brat just acknowledge his own shortcomings and be reasonable. Reasonable. The thought was so absurd that Jureya shook his head and broke out into a big smile. 
He put a hand on Naruto's head and ruffled his hair affectionately. The little brat was growing up quickly, and what was this? For his Shizun-chan no less. The kid was making far more progress into becoming a man than he would have even dreamed of when the two of them left Konoha over a month ago. The kid's getting an extra big bowl of Maizo Raymond tomorrow. Ureya assumed the piggyback stance and told Naruto to hop on. Naruto looked blankly at the Iro Senen. Oh god no. This is too much. Ureya however, was not thinking along the same lines. To restate, the time for laziness and jokes had passed. No time Naruto. Get on, or I'm leaving you behind. You have 5 seconds. Make your choice. Now. Naruto stiffened. Hiro Senen had never taken that tone of voice with him. It was more menacing than Shukaku after Gara fell asleep. Hoping to not upset Hiro Senen any further, Naruto vaguely wondered how fast the Hiro Senen could move. He got his answer in the next following second. Hiraya flew. Even at 50, he could outrun Anbu Ninja 30 years his junior and could cover more ground than a using Shunshin. It took Naruto a minute to get used to the speed. The first 20 seconds were very touchy, he almost got motion sickness a couple times. After steadying himself, Naruto began to enjoy the speed. It was exhilarating to be moving this fast. The air rushing by you was cooling and refreshing, and you just felt so light, as if you were the wind itself. Naruto had to give the old man some props. He could move. In a burst of curiosity, Naruto checked to see if Hirosenin was short of breath. As it was, Hirosenin was still breathing normally. Show off, Naruto mused. Feeling the need to make up for his embarrassment, Naruto began telling Iro Senen about his breakthrough on the dot. So Iro Senen Naruto began. Hmm, what brat? Don't make me talk. Ureya curtly replied. Naruto snorted. What the heck is this? Well, whatever. Fine, then just listen. Naruto didn't wait for a reply. Yesterday, during my training, you know Shizun chan helped me, right? Well, I tried really hard and practiced a lot, but I couldn't make that same small thing that you can make, Naruto told Ureya. Ureya mentally snorted. Well duh. Sunade may have been harsh on you, but she was more or less right. But something was off. That same small. I couldn't make them at all, so Shizun chan told me to make a small one and work my way up. That didn't work out so well, the small ones are even harder to make, actually. Ureya mentally sighed. Shizun should know the aspects of the dot it's exponentially harder to make smaller ones than larger ones control wise. Larger ones are easier to make, but they require too much chakra. Ureya's eyes widened. If what he was thinking was right, Shizun had found a vein of gold. All of a sudden, what Naruto had to say greatly interested him. Ureya was allowed the time to think because Naruto was busy wiping his face off. Some stupid bugs were hitting his face. Stupid Iro Senen, I bet he's doing it on purpose. Betting the last of it, Naruto started again. So yeah, I couldn't make the small ones. I told her how it was even harder to make a small one, so she told me to make a larger one. That one was easier for me, and by the end of the day, I could make the size of Naruto look around. Your head Naruto finished triumphantly. Ureya mentally started dancing around like a little girl in a field of flowers. Shizun came through big time. He'd have to test it, but Naruto sounded like he could make something that was battle ready. Ureya did not forget the jab Naruto threw in. That would not do. Are you implying that I have a big head, you little brat Ureya asked, his voice dripping with mock venom. Naruto laughed. Implying. I'm not implying. I know. Ureya shook his head and kept silent. No comeback would have been sufficient for that one. The two continued on for another minute before the silence got to Naruto. Iro Senen. Actually, when I was working on making the smaller, I forgot to take out some chakra, and the thing sort of blew up on me. It was cool. Ureya knew what Naruto was talking about. The third step of the, applying a thin layer of chakra over the swirling chakra, could only contain so much chakra. If you threw in too much chakra, it didn't matter how much control you had, the intensity of the swirling chakra would erode the third step and create an explosion. Ureya had it happened to him many times when he was learning it from Minato. It quickly dispersed itself outwards. However, for him, the explosion just threw his arm off to the side, it wasn't even strong enough to break a bone or tear a muscle. But for Naruto, Naruto Jureya asked. How big was the explosion? Naruto grinned. It made a crater so big you could have fit the tower in it. Ureya was shocked. The difference in explosive power was that large. Then again, the volume of chakra required goes up by a power of three, so it wasn't totally impossible. But to fit the Hokage Tower. Ureya mentally did the math and found that the size of his head would not be anywhere near big enough to make a crater that wide. Surely Naruto was exaggerating. He only had to check one more thing to be absolutely sure. Naruto, how big was that first thing that you could control when you tried to downsize it? Naruto made a hem sound and began to think. He came up with a truthful, yet, in his opinion, hilarious answer. After hearing it, Jiraiya couldn't see the humor in it at all. That was impossible. Yet, if it were, the math fit. 
He didn't have to do the calculations, he knew it was big enough. Jiraiya began salivating at the things the brat could do with that thing. Oh the possibilities. It was as big as the Sandame Hokage's nose on the Hokage monument. Tsunade was desperate. Arachimaru would get to her in less than a minute. Her chakra was down to about half, and to heal Shizun would require a good chunk of that, along with more time than what she had. So she did the only thing she could do. She tried to stall for time. Arachimaru Tsunade began. Arachimaru stopped, as did Kabuto. Good, at least that got him to stop, Tsunade thought. Now to keep him there for as long as I can. At least let Shizun go. WH she began as Arachimaru interrupted her, a smile forming at his lips. I know what you're doing Tsunade Haim. You are stalling for time. As amusing as it would be to let you do it and see what you come up with, I have other pressing engagements that require my presence. I cannot dilly dally here any longer than I need to. With that, he began walking over to her even faster than he had before. Kabuto matched his master's pace, then looked at the pained face of, what did she say her name was? Ah. Shizun. Such a beautiful feminine name, Kabuto felt the kind of lust that he hadn't felt in a long time. It had happened twice before in his life. Both times he had satiated his lust. Both times the women were found dead, violated beyond measure. So here was Kabuto, following his master, towards the two Kanoichi, one an old woman hiding behind an illusion to protect her vanity. The other, a young woman fighting for her life after suffering multiple injuries. Even from where he was, he could see that she was fighting to stay conscious, her breathing was labored, and her face a grimace of pain. She was tired, she was hurt, and she was so ready for him. Kabuto licked his lips in anticipation. He was going to have some fun tonight. Tsunade, out of options, decided to heal Shizun and have her get out of here. She had seen the lust in the glasses freak's eyes and knew it wasn't aimed at her. To heal Shizun would put herself at Orochimaru's mercy, but to not do so would put them both at his mercy. Her choice was an easy one to make. Orochimaru was not 10 feet from her when he stopped. Tsunade noticed this and looked up. She tried to appeal to what humanity he had and looked pleadingly at him. Orochimaru gave no indication of receiving any kind of plea. Apparently her cry fell on deaf ears. Or in this case, blind eyes would be more appropriate. Tsunade Haim. I can kill you now where you sit. And there isn't a thing you can do about it. Orochimaru began. She knew he was more or less right. She could punch the ground and create a barrier from the earth, but that would kill Shizun. And kill Shizun she would not. Orochimaru continued. But that would accomplish nothing, and in fact would make this entire altercation a waste of my time. So here is what I am going to do. I am going to modify the deal on the table. Heal my arms Tsunade Haim, or Orochimaru drew Kusanagi. Your apprentice dies. The Budo flinched, but recovered quickly. No way the slug lets her apprentice die, especially with the history that they have. Now heal Orochimaru Sama's arms, die by his hand, and leave me some personal time with my Shizun. This was it. Nothing to be done now. Defeated and out of options, Tsunade broke out in tears before looking up at Orochimaru. Okay she began, the defeat clear in her voice. I, now Brat yelled Jiraiya. Tsunade and Orochimaru turned to look at Jiraiya emerging from the forest with Naruto on his back. For Tsunade, this was the equivalent of Kami-sama sending his angels to do his work. For Orochimaru, this was the equivalent of Kami-sama sending his angels to get in his way. Kabuto was lost in his thoughts planning his night with Shizun and consequently did not notice. Hoping to salvage the situation, Orochimaru readied Kusanagi and was about to end Shizun's life when he felt a monstrous level of chakra output. It was such that it froze him and compelled him to look at what it was. Naruto on Jiraiya's back held both arms up and put his hands together, forming the size of, as he put it, the Sandame Hokage's nose. Orochimaru could see it all, the swirling chakra, the chakra density, and most of all, the sheer amount of chakra the technique was holding in. Jiraiya jumped high in the air as Naruto jumped off his back and threw the giant at Orochimaru, yelling the name of the technique he and Irosenin came up with in the past three minutes. Naruto. The Damara Sengen. The last thought that raced through Orochimaru's brain before the enormous touched the ground was perhaps the most proper. The technique truly worthy of the Kaiubi Jinchuriki. Now Orochimaru knew how it worked. It grinds into the opponent. Orochimaru had prepared a defense expecting the same thing, just on a larger scale. Oh how wrong he was. As soon as the Adamara Sengen touched the ground, that was it. The third step wore off and created an explosion that scared off all the birds in a two mile radius. The explosion was enormous, requiring Orochimaru a substantial amount of chakra to even stay on the ground and protect himself. The damage he sustained was negligible, but the worst was yet to come. The explosion had kicked up a cloud of dust and dirt several times the size of the technique itself. But the cough cough Orochimaru began as the dust overwhelmed his respiratory system. The Budo had been thrown back from the explosion, but the injuries he sustained were minor, and he quickly healed. The more imminent problem was this giant haze of dust that the explosion kicked up. 
Arachimaru was in there, and he could hear his master coughing. As it was, Arachimaru was nearing three years with the particular body that he was in, and it had already begun to deteriorate. Lung damage for Arachimaru's body at this stage was a potentially huge problem. He needed to clear this up fast. The Budo quickly formed the seal combination to use the one Arachimaru teaches all of his subordinates. It was a brilliant idea after all, to know at least one of each elemental type. So simple, so obvious, and yet, no one else does it. That is what defines a true genius. To see what no one else sees, especially if it is the obvious. A true genius, Arachimaru was. The Tapa. Yelled Kabuto as the air exploded from where he stood. The following streams of wind quickly dissipated the dust cloud, alleviating his master's coughing problems and allowing them to see their surroundings. Kabuto hurried over to Arachimaru, who had the definition of anger plastered on his face. Looking at where Arachimaru was looking, Kabuto noticed not two, but four people. Tsunade was in a sitting position healing her worthless apprentice, who looked to be in bad condition. Not a foot behind them stood the legendary Toad Senen, Jiraiya. Kabuto sighed. This battle just got exponentially more difficult. The final person stood to Jiraiya's right. Kabuto looks at him. This person was short, with spiky hair. His hair was blonde, his eyes were blue, and he had six whiskers on his face. Kabuto's eyes lit up. This person he had met before. This person was memorable. This person was potentially defined. This person was the first to speak. Walking out of Jureya's shadow, Naruto looked at Arachimaru. So there stood the man who had killed his Jai-chan, his daddy was going to pay. Then he looked at the person next to him. Glasses, gray hair, ponytail, complete with a standard Kanoha Genin wardrobe. The Budo Naruto asked. Stepping forward and smiling widely, Kabuto fixed his glasses and answered back. Hello, Naruto-kun. 